Welcome to Voyage of the Geek for another week. This 10th of May, 2017, a very special show. It's our first uh, quartet of opinion. <laughs> Four cranky old men in a room. Um, and we're here tonight to, uh, to have a look at what is considered one of the all-time cult classics, uh, Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, and the full title is... Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai in the Eighth Dimension. Awesome. Joining me always, Dan Miller. Hello. Rick Legato back on the panel. Good evening. Tom McGill. Same we are the Quartet of Doom <laughs> tonight, looking at uh, a, a classic. It should be uh, the Hong Kong hooligans. <laughs> I don't mind that. I, yeah. That's got a ring to it, especially uh, with the subject matter for this evening. So, uh, gentlemen, how did we... Uh, how did we generally like getting back into this film after... Well, first of all, who saw it in its original run in the early 80s? Nope, not I. <laughs> not I, many. <laughs> okay, so my story is that I somehow managed to see half of it. Yeah. I don't know how, how I managed to see half of it. It's one of those things where you go over to your mate's place and they're watching it and they're halfway through or whatever. And, and anyway, my friends at the time... So I didn't see half of it. My friends at the time went berserk over it. Right. They thought it was friggin' amazing! However, I had fairly smart friends, so I don't think any of them was under any <laughs> illusions that this was um, akin to 2001. No. But they all all thought it was friggin' awesome. It, um, I sort of managed to stay away from it. Mm -mm. I, I don't think I ever caught it. Um, it certainly didn't ring any bells when I, when I watched it mm. the other day. Um, and I just remember at that time thinking... Um, it was a bit weird for me, a little mm -hmm. bit non-mainstream, and I was more into your Chuck Norris movies and stuff like that. Star Wars mm. is, is obviously uh, the staple, but no, I just sort of never got around to seeing it. I always thought it was a bit too weird for me, and I wouldn't understand it. it and and the trailer um, reminded me of of uh, something that I just thought would go over my head. Mm. You know? I was, mm. was travelled in different different crowds at that point in my life yeah definitely the people that um yeah i was talking about my mates who were watching it they they liked it for all of those reasons so mm. yeah and i don't think it was promoted particularly well or yeah. particularly much yeah you know? what, what about you rick you, um, any memories I of it i must have been too busy watching good films uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> As you're not spoiling, very loaded spoiling us with your opinions here <laughs> very loaded you? statement so early in the <laughs> i remember passing rick in the hallway the other day and thinking and his first words to me was who who the fuck have i got to blame <laughs> and how can i ever get that hour and 45 minutes back? <laughs> um but i think he warmed up to it maybe i don't know doubtful no no we need we need biased opinions yeah. otherwise it would be a boring podcast <laughs> what about you tom you, did you uh, see its original I was aware back in the 80s of mm. the film it's a, it's a title that I I have known for you know decades and decades but it's never a film that I particularly uh, thought I might might watch I don't know I've never seen the trailer I just I'm just aware that it showed at the cinemas mm. but uh, I uh, I didn't I didn't shy away from the opinion to finally see it there's a you know some films on my list that I've you know always wanted to see because they're mm. They're things that have been around for a long time. People talk about it. It's mm -hmm. like cult films that you think, oh, okay, I missed, I missed when they were showing back then. But they did turn into a cult thing. And and what's what's about it? What what do they have that makes people uh, go crazy for them? So those are the films that I that I have that I've you know get, give, get, give given the chance sooner or later I'll watch them all. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. In the same boat. I, I'm aware of its cult status. Mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated as to why. Mm -hmm. um, it was on the list, I guess, of similar movies that, that also have cult status that I've never sort of got around to seeing. Where it was on that list, I'm not too sure. It always seemed to be shoved 
uh, out of the top couple. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's 47 out of the top 50. Yeah, it's, it's that yeah. type of cult and, classic. And, it, and nothing ever moves up that list. Like, you can watch 10 movies out of that list, and it's still going to be 47 long, <laughs> yeah. and you're just shuffling new stuff into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it always sort of was in there, and I was aware of it. Never was I aware of who was in it. No. And that made it interesting. When I looked yeah. at it and saw how many well-known actors actually respected, played in this respected thing. Respected actors. Yeah, definitely well. have to see that. Yeah. And, and if you look at their... their these are not... This is not the first time that they're in front of a camera. They're not newcomers even then. Mm. They're all already respected and they've already had a bit of a career in, in, in movie making. They're not as, as well known as they are now, but... Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jeff Goldblum still gets around a little bit. He, he sort of went over to television, which is a lot of good actors nowadays. Dramatic acting um, is taking up residence on television nowadays with H- mm. HBO and various things. Um, and he was the lead detective in, in Law and Order there for a little while. And his quirky nature made that role pretty cool to, mm. to watch. I've always had a lot of respect. Imagine Jurassic Park without Jeff Goldblum in it. Mm. It would be a totally different film, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Up itself, mm. way too much. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, that picture of him lying on the table when they're sort of patching his leg up in Jurassic Park, that finds itself into memes all over the place where he's got <laughs> the chest exposed and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, and another, I guess another classic movie that we should probably have a look at at some point is The Fly. And, and he did a great mm. job in The Fly. Mm. You know, I thought he was, he was pretty good. Um, so Jeff Goldblum, we have um, Peter Weller, mm-hmm. who Peter Weller never broke into the mainstream. Um, he was never a superstar, but he was a solid staple of well, sci-fi. Well, he had, and had some movies that really made made an impact. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Mo- first and foremost, Ro- Robocop, mm-hmm. which I think was just a year <coughs> or two after. It wouldn't have been too. It, it, yeah, it wouldn't have been too too long after this. Um, so we just Jeff Goldblum, um, Peter Weller. But really, it was the aliens that, for me, you know, with Christopher Lloyd um, and uh, John Lithgow. And John Lithgow, no one plays an alien posing as a human (laughs) as as well as John Lithgow. Um, It carried that uh, TV sitcom for, what, eight years, I think. They they, they had a pretty big run. Yeah, Yeah, Third Rock. Yeah, that was a good show. Um, and he plays quirky crazy really, really well. Mm-hmm. He um, did it on, on, on the set of the movie very, very well. And uh, because he was a character that was not part of the main cast, mm. uh, he was brought in to, sh- to play his bit for, I don't know, three weeks of shooting or, or less. And uh, the other crew had already, you know, filmed and bonded and they had not... Suddenly this guy comes on board and they have a few days shooting with him. Mm. And he does this outrageous Italian accent, <laughs> which cracks everyone up. Everyone's sort of trying to stay... Stay serious while he's doing these awesome, fantastic performances <laughs> upstages everyone. And it, and it suited the role. It suited the role, didn't it? He, he, the fact that he was possessed um, by the entity, you know, another entity sort of thing. It really uh, it worked quite well. So um, where do you want to where do you want to start off, Dan? I think we we discussed our format of of pretty much looking at the film um, as a as four sets of uh, uh, opinions and minds and, and, and four sets of eyes all coming together to try to follow the narrative lin- in a linear format mm-hmm. through the film as we understood it and as we saw it and stopping off with interesting things as we go and ultimately coming out the other end probably a little bit dumber than, than we went into <laughs> it. But um, that's pretty much the format we'll follow. So so let's start off. Um, the, the credits, the opening credits were all before we do. I think it's worth noting that we've 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 followed Corman a little bit mm-hmm. with some of his films. Well, as almost as equally um, infamous with poor cinema due to the rapid uh, turnaround is the Canon Film Group, and we've studied. We did a whole show on the Canon Film Film Group, the the guys that gave us all of the Chuck Norris films, all of the Charles Bronson films, um, all of the Jean Claude Van Damme films. And so on, and, and the formula is in this film. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realise it was canon. I, I saw a canon film when I was watching it, but I didn't realise till I did a bit of research in the last couple of days. So this is a canon film and mm. therefore belongs to that canon family of, of films. Um, and so let's let's hold that in the back of our mind when we're when we're judging this this film. That mm-hmm. and the fact that it was nineteen the year. 84. Yeah, nineteen eighty eighty four. Eighty four. Mm. So those two things combined sort of put it into context of where it sits in the overall wonder that is cinema. 
Um, okay, so we're going to go through the story and basically kind of talk about it. Um, <clears throat> there's probably a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Um, maybe we, we could go into about the uh, the start of it, about the, the writers and sort of how they generated the story and came up with the story, but we might talk about that as we kind of move along. Um, so uh, w- where they start off, they start off in the desert and um, there's a lot of activity going on, right? There's a whole lot of buses and a whole lot of crew and a whole lot of trailers and it's obviously out in one of those salt flat things yeah. you know it's a sort of a familiar scene um and there's a rocket car there all right and so everybody's getting ready and there's microphones everybody's it's talking truck. it's a rocket <laughs> truck okay it's so not a sleek <laughs> right so this is, where our first right. Car, <laughs> this is where our first discussion has to start um yes correction tom is correct it's in fact a rocket truck and it's the first of very many product placements. Is it? Throughout the film. This film had some rather <laughs> rather gr- <laughs> gratuitous um, product placement, um, starting with Ford with the truck. Uh-huh. Okay. Monochrome shocks yep. on the truck. Yeah. Yep. And later on it goes on the Harley-Davidson, Pepsi. That's right. They're unloading Harley-Davidson's. Mm. So, yes, you're right. We'll have to keep that in Le- mind. Levi's. Yes. Yeah. Another one. All right, so what do we think of the truck is the first thing. As an, an as an aesthetic, we're seeing designs of it here. I'll hold this up here so we can have a look at it. Just, uh, actually, kill that. Because I was thinking about, you know, let's imagine that you're going to invent a time machine mm. and you're going to need to place it in some sort of object. A DeLorean. You might choose a DeLorean. And now, what was what was the excuse for putting it into a DeLorean? Oh, you might as well have a bit of style yeah, if that's, you're going to do right. this sort of thing, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. However, um, <laughs> Buckaroo Banzai has invented a, a crazy thing in a similar fashion, and um, he's put it in a truck. And it's it's not a pretty truck. It's not a pretty truck. Mm. It's um, an ugly pickup. <laughs> it's an ugly pickup truck. Yes. Now, yeah, why they couldn't have... I guess it's the only vehicle that's heavy, hefty enough to carry all that. Bl- I mean, look how many engines that thing's got and, and wings they're and aerofoils. And they're real engines. They're real jets, real jets yeah. out of it. I don't so know whether they were operational while they were shooting the film. They needed something that can carry eight, you know, 7.4 tons of equipment. So and that's an actually an interesting observation because, yes, it is a real jet. They do actually have a jet truck. They made mm-hmm. a jet truck. Yeah. It was um, operational. I don't know whether it operated during the film. I don't yes, think it did. Did it? When he yes. took off, he was... Yes, it was really? a serious piece of kit. Yeah. Um, they hired a jet car maker dude to make the truck for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and the truck had it had a big rocket on the back, which apart from just belching out fire and smoke, actually pushed along. It did, like, blast out rocket energy. Yep. But it had an engine and it had loads of... Um, you know, super turbo carburetor. And it could actually do 200 miles per hour. There's miles per hour. Well, that's impressive. So, so we're closing yeah, yeah. in on 320 odd k's an hour or something <laughs> like that. Does that sound right? Sure. Well, something like that. Absolutely. Well, anyway. <laughs> that's correct. 380 quad loose. It's a pretty serious thing, actually. <laughs> so it's a strange thing that, hmm. um, you know, they spent, I don't know, time, money, and energy to get a realistic, practical, Slightly dorky effect. Yep. Um, and there was their first mistake. And the, <laughs> yes, the first mistake. Okay. All right. So, um, what is evidently going to be happening is there's going to be some sort of test that's yes. going to happen with this truck. Mm-hmm. Military's we, involved. There's the military, there's the government, there's all sorts of things. And then there's this weird band of oddly 80s nouveau Euro trash type. Well, characters floating around in the bunker. Right. They're sitting there with their, with their, with their backs against the wall. You know, yeah, everyone yeah. else is on dials. And like some people are just sort of sitting there. Well, one guy's got a big up. puffy shoulder padded uh, jacket with no shirt on at all with <laughs> yeah, six pack hanging out next standing next to a general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It, it looks like the, the members of um, an 80s band yeah, yeah. just walked in. Yeah, well, that, absolutely. that was the idea. That, that's what yeah. they, I think for, first yeah. and foremost uh-huh. are their band. <laughs> it was yeah. the members yeah. of Aha. Oh, Adamant. <laughs> Adamant. The, yeah. the, the, the yeah. thing, you know. And so that's the, the first head scratching, hang on, what the hell am I watching here moment. Yeah. Because up until then, it just looks like some sort of military test in the on the salt flats. So then we've got a bunch of guys, these bunch of weird guys who we don't know anything about who are talking in radios and organising things and, and, and whatnot. 
and um, apparently they have a bit of a, a minor hiccup and um, the minor hiccup is of course that the star of the show seems to be missing they can't find their driver yeah they can't find their driver he's late so Tom where do they find their driver well he's got or a, they don't find he's got driver. a day job right so this this guy <laughs> who's a who's the the, the film's hero is uh, like everyone like like Bruce Wayne like you would can expect. do everything you yeah. know he's a he's he's a neurosurgeon yes he's a martial arts expert he is a test pilot he is a rock and roll star a scientist as well scientist yes so he can do all these things so so he has to help a a, a colleague perform brain surgery <laughs> so he's called in to help with brain surgery because his colleague got got lost a little bit in the brain you can imagine the uh, the the call that happened before it's like you know buckaroo i'm in the i'm in surgery i got a problem you know the brain i can't find the the metadiglia and buckaroo's like oh man i got a rocket car appointment in 15 minutes yeah, he wouldn't even say that buckaroo would say yeah i'll be i'll be there in five minutes i can get it done in 10 and we'll be back here in 20. yeah in some ways oh man it's probably too emotional for i think i've got a sh- continue talking i he think i've got a photo he here for some reason together. he was uh, operating on the brain in some kind of hazmat suit, yeah. Yes, for some reason I don't that that never got explained. I think why they have full body protection. Um, but so this is going on while everyone's out on the salt flat waiting for him to turn up. They're preparing. Yeah, they still have they have a countdown going. I suppose. Yeah, they, they got ten minutes. He's got yeah, ten minutes to get there. He's got ten minutes. Why, why should he hang yeah. around doing? You we know we without being productive without helping, <laughs> helping making the world a better place. So interestingly, we don't even see Buckaroo Banzai, our hero. He's actually got the face mask on, and we don't actually get to see him. We don't right? see him doing uh. the perfor- performing the uh, operation. So no, we I, don't I, see his face. It, I didn't. First time I saw the movie, I didn't know who was who. Yeah, you, you, you get point. later on once you know what color glasses they're wearing. You know, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum has the blue ones, and and Peter Weller has the red ones, and you can tell them apart and set those hazmat suits. But even later on, when he then arrives. He's wearing a helmet and a, and a face mask as well, a ski mask. That's right. So, so you don't even see him. But we m- I might be getting ahead. Well, no, 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 that's fine. I, but I think that that's, that's a thematic point that for some reason they wanted to hide the hero's face until they were mm. quite a way into the movie for some reason. They have yeah. a big reveal and it's like, yeah. oh, it's Peter Weller, a guy who we've never seen yeah, before yeah. on screen. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, because it was like they were holding the suspense for the, for the big superstar. Yeah, yeah. Which he wasn't. Yeah. And All they right. did say they wanted the relative unknown to play that role. Yeah. Yes. So he, I mean, he had done stuff before, but he wasn't as famous as he was post Robocop. Okay. So the guy that he's helping with the brain surgery is a, is another brain surgeon uh, named Sidney Zwiebel. Um, Which is German for onion. Oh, is it? <laughs> yes. Sydney onion. Sydney onion. <laughs> okay. Played, uh, played by Jeff Goblin. Played by Jeff Goblin. All right, so um, there's another important thing that happens at that event. He asks Jeff Goldblum to join his merry band. That's right. Yes. That's, right. Yes. That's, right. That's right. Can you sing? And he says, no, I can dance. Oh, That's yeah, right. you're fine. You're, you're and it's important to note that Goldblum had, it, had the quirk meter turned down in this film relative to some of the films we've seen him in. Mm. Yeah. I was going to describe his character by saying he's... Jeff Goldblum, um, um, Sidney Zwiebel, the character, Sidney Onion, the character in the movie, he's got the same character as um, that um, scientist in The Fly. Mm. And he's also got the same character as that scientist in Independence, Independence Day. Day. And the same character as that other scientist in, in Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, and all of it is just different variations of quirk meter. With or without a hat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But... <laughs> Further on in his career, the quirk meter became a lot <laughs> narrower band up around 11, in between 9 and 11. Yeah, we just hovered around there. Yeah. There was one um, strange line that actually I, that took my, uh, that made me giggle, is that he, he, he invited, you know, him to join the Banzai Institute. And, yes. Um, uh, yes. you know, Sidney Zwiebel says, oh, is there a place open? And it's like. It's just Buckaroo and his mates. It's just a bunch of idiots hanging around in a friggin' it's a place and a, open. And well, a, they're doing something. And a professor yeah. that, that has some kind of interdimensional mach- machine. Yeah, that's right. The, the He's part of the Banzai he, Institute as well. He is. But they all have secondary um, jobs there. They're not just band members, right? So no, no, they all work at the Institute. They that's all true. have, they're all scientists or inventors. Right. And Tommy, Perfect Tommy. Perfect Tommy? Yes. Perfect yeah, Tommy, yes. He, he's the Completely guy who, who built the car. 
And so he's the mechanic. And then they have, you know, in the oh, later on, everyone, you know, they're playing a band, and then shit goes down, and everyone whips out a, a handgun. Even the drummer yeah. whips out an Uzi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're, they're, they're running around loaded with with weapons and doing signs and playing music. They're all, you know, he, he picks them. He picks the right. They're Renaissance men. Yeah. They yeah. Renaissance yeah, yeah, men. Uzi Renaissance men. Similar, similar, to, similar yeah. to this merry band here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Jeff Goldblum's list. We should give each other nicknames. <laughs> You know, you well, Jeff, speaking of nicknames, Jeff Goldblum is listed in IMDb as New Jersey. Yes, yes that's right. Yes, yeah. that's what he plays. However, I think it's fair to say that he doesn't get his nickname until later on in the... Until he joins the Merry Band, yeah, that's right. which may, may be the same for everyone. Maybe, yes. Maybe. Hey, um, he introduces himself, where you're from, you're from New Jersey, and that's how he got that. That's it, yeah. The best nickname in that whole group is Perfect Tommy. Yes, it is. It is such a useful one, because he yeah. gets... Shit end of the stick all the yeah. all the time. Yeah. Every time he, you know, the alien, he's gonna be in your team. Yeah. Mm, okay. You know, <laughs> give me your get, jacket. Give me your jacket. Why do I have to do it? Because you're perfect. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the perfect name. Yeah, to you're right about that. You want to, <laughs> want to <laughs> manipulate? <laughs> you want to manipulate? Yeah. yeah. yeah you're perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. All right. So. So he turns up, and it, he's now <clears throat> about to take off in uh, jet car. Yeah. So he puts on his. Bella Laclava, and he now looks like a terrorist instead yep. of a whatever. Um, and he jumps into the car, and um, he's got with him um, a special thing, which is a little piece of techno babble, which is the oscillation overthruster, which is the uh, the object of awe the for yeah, it's, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's the, after this uh, yep. throughout the film. It's the uh, it's like the flux capacitor. So if you, if you know what a flux in, capacitor is, you know what an oscillation overthruster is. In fact, there's this one shot where they turn it on, and you have this triangular thing that looks exactly oh, yeah, like yeah. a flux capacitor <laughs> oh, really? turning on. That's what the it, uh, scientist. What's his name? Um, Ito. Got it here. Doctor Ito. Doctor Ito. Uh, Professor. Um, oh no, Hikata. Ito's the. That's his, that's the actor's name. Yeah, he, that's his acting. Uh, his real name is Robert Ito. Okay then, so he starts off in the rocket car and they shoot down the runway and he, he drives his rocket car. Now what they were trying to do at that test, I don't quite know, mm. right? Were they testing the rockets or were or, they, I or did they secretly stick the uh, overthruster in the rocket car that was supposed to be the object of the test in order to test their overthruster? Yeah, yeah they, I, th I, I think they were just supposed to be testing the car at this stage. That's what I thought. But the Banzai gang yeah. decided to... They knew more. They, they were up to something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, yeah, what happens is they say, all right, that's the test over, and uh, pull into the, 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 the pits and we'll do it. But then the film goes into high speed, and then suddenly there's a right angle turn. Yeah. yeah. Buckaroo's cars, off. The car's travelling really fast, but everybody's walking really fast in the background. Yes, <laughs> yes. This is part of the time matrix from the operation of the, oper of the overthruster. Um, so... Um, uh, is the rest of the Banzai Institute in on this? Or well, yeah, they yes. have, they, he's got this little, you know, he lifts, uh, uh, Professor Hikiru, Hakiru, um, whatever, lifts the little blanket off Akito. Off right. Akito. He, he has yep. the, the, the device that he, yep. he looks at. And when he veers off, they all know. Yeah. They because, all know why. Um, it's only the general that doesn't really yeah. know. I kind of thought that nobody knew. No, they knew. No, they knew no, no, no I think they had all the equipment. Especially his like, offsider. Um, you, know oh, the, Clancy, you know the guy Clancy Brown, Clancy Brown is there going yeah, smiling at the, knowingly you know, and when perfect he's, now it's Clancy me. Brown no no see my, my thought is that this is them all smiling is they're saying yeah yeah he's always doing crazy shit like this you know we're just trying to nah, keep up no nah, nah, I think nah, nah, no, nah. I, I read that they, they knew what he was doing and okay. especially the Comey guy actually says something like don't worry and he, he kind of keeps a knowing wink to we got it under control or yeah, whatever yeah. so he's Clancy Brown the guy that played the bad guy in Highlander? Absolutely. The okay, Kurgan. Cool. The Kurgan. So yeah, that's yeah. Rawhide. Okay, cool. That's Rawhide. Okay. Yes. Rawhide, yes. Who goes on to become an immortal sword-sweeping bad guy in another world. Oh, does he? Yes. I never knew that. Because he, he did get bitten by the uh, the little... Yeah, see? That's what turns him into the Kurgan, and then he goes off and becomes <laughs> and he attacks Highlander. Oh, I got you. Okay. So see? it's all linked That's up. how it works in I the background. Because you see him walking in the end credits. Yes! That's the proof that he did <laughs> That's attack. right. Speaking of end credits, you know you can watch a half an hour version of that? Yes, I did. <laughs> an extended half an hour I version of so them just walking <laughs> down the stormwater drains in LA. I was working at uh, at work uh, last uh, a few days ago putting videos together and just editing in, in After Effects, and it was pretty sort of, didn't have to think much. You just had to get to 
the thing done and i had just seen the movie and i'd really gotten into that end music <laughs> theme so i put up that 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 half hour thing was looping yeah. while i was working i just had that music playing so half an hour hour. wasn't enough for <laughs> no, you. have it on you don't get tired of that music cool all right so so he's taken off he's, he's veered off. off at the last minute and he's now heading across the sand flats and he uh, turns on the um, flux capacitor, the flux, <laughs> the, the not flux capacitor, and a big laser beam shoots out of his um, right. car. Little targeting sort of uh, it's it opens the essentially it opens the dimensional portal. That's blah, right. blah blah blah, yada science puts all the all the molecules into alignment. Yes, it mm. opens the science, mm. and then he heads straight towards a mountain and runs straight into it. Yes, disappears, and to all of our stunned shock. Mm. Is that it doesn't it car doesn't explode, but it actually goes inside the mount, and we see some psychedelic um, uh, rage, as in the ABC <laughs> uh, music program, some sort of rage. We see twelve episodes of Eat Carpet yeah. all squished into one, all overlapping <laughs> <laughs> moire <laughs> effects everywhere. Uh, <laughs> while he's in the the other dimension, obviously, those effects apparently were um, uh, collected from. Um, Shot through an electron microscope. Yeah, it's all microscopic, oh, wow. electron microscopic That's imagery. Cool. Yes, and I think there's a bit of a um, a VFX credit there that that was the first time anybody filmed or used um, an electron microscope in that way. You know, they'd managed to somehow extract those images out of the scope. Other people, I don't know, just sticking their eyeball mm. against it and having a look. All right, so. He goes inside the mountain. Now this is this is important um, because this is the, the this is the eighth dimension. Now, maybe I'll just chime in here that when I was first hearing about it by my mates who were like you know over at their place and they're like, "Buckaroo beds on the eighth dimension is bloody hilarious. Check this out. It's awesome." One of the things I was scratching my head about was like, eighth dimension. <laughs> What happened to the bloody fifth dimension? Surely we should go to the fifth dimension before we go to the yeah, eighth dimension. Absolutely. What is this? It's a travesty. Yeah. And, and you can't help but question it too. The well, it's because science. They already I think have it's explanations I think it's because others. crazy director. No, no, no. Yeah. There's a perfectly logical reason for it. Oh, yeah. is there really? Yes. And that is there's the, you know, there's the first, second, third, and fourth dimension. Which is X, Y, Z, and time. Plus time. And note that there's now another four X, Y, Z, and time. We're just talking in the the, the higher dimension, oh, gotcha. the meta gotcha. one. Yeah, There's yeah, another, yeah. Gotcha. so it's actually the same pattern. That's yeah. what he's he's going into, okay, right? Cool. So he's going beyond time and space. Yep. Now we watched a previous movie that claimed that it went beyond time and space. This was <laughs> Battle Beyond the Stars, but they didn't go beyond any stars. They didn't no. go beyond space, and they didn't go beyond time. In fact, the whole movie happened in real time. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so. This movie actually does go beyond time and space. All right, so he comes out, goes through the... Goes be, and then he comes outside the other side of the mountain. And it's bloody amazing. And they've got a chopper and they're filming it. And it's bloody crazy. And um, then he parks the car and he gets out. Big reveal, pulls off his mask. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Finds a bit of goo, a bit <laughs> of interdimensional ecto goo on <laughs> yeah. the... And then... Um, for some reason, feels the urge to crawl under the car because they say there's strange vibrations. Do they? Yeah. Uh, they the even radio. say that there's actually. They say this is the guys in the chopper. I think it's the guys in the chopper. The car's got an oil leak. Oh, it's like okay. parked there dripping, and I'm yeah. like, they must have some sweet technology to detect <laughs> oil leaks in the car <laughs> from a chopper. <laughs> from a chopper. But so anyway. he crawls underneath. He finds a life form under the car. That's right. Now, before he goes out, I found watching the film the first time, I found it really odd how quickly. He gets out, right? The car's still moving. Yeah. It's a bit of smoke and he waves That's the right. smoke away, but he is in a hurry to get out of the car. He jumps out while the car hasn't even come to a full stop. And well, I was wondering, what's, why is that? A, well, if I was a in a jet car that was smoking, <laughs> I probably wouldn't take my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, found, I found out of my list of quirky weirdness that I couldn't quite explain. That's down the list, but it was on the list because right. I, I noticed the same thing. Where, where he's sort of in a big hurry. He's been all Mr. Cool, and all of a sudden he's sort of... Get, get out of here, get out of here. And he even goes away, doesn't he? Doesn't yeah, he I'm not thinking. He maybe he expects away. it to explode. Now, That's there was the wait, original wait, wait. opening. Sorry, go ahead. To I've the got film, yep. which is the, the Super 8 tapes, which Buckaroo filmed when ah, he was a little we child. we forgot about those. And uh, they were taken out of the, of the release. But the original opening to the film was to be the Super 8 tapes of him with his parents and mm -hmm. how his parents built the rocket car. And of course, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis as his mother and his 
father is exploding because the car explodes because it was was booby trapped by the arch villain Hanoi Zhang. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of this actually um, highlights a thing about the movie that yeah. there is all of this background lore, yeah. right? And um, they're trying to cram a lot of stuff into this movie, which they um, did. Which they did. Yeah. They I think the talked. director admits it that there was there was things in the movie that made it not a comedy, so they had to take it out, like. Like, like the nemesis. Like the nemesis who was supposed to be serious. Mm. And and of course, the director these days treats the whole thing like a documentary. Mm. So, like it's all real. Like so the Institute, we, we the Banzai Institute is right. a real thing. So we're actually missing the Darth Vader character. There's a Darth Vader, uh, his yes. actual nemesis, mm. who is missing from the movie, completely mm. not in the movie. Yep. The reason why he gets out of the car mm -hmm. in a big hurry is because the car's red hot. Okay. Now, you might not have picked that up no. in the movie. No. Uh, but that's Buckaroo Banzai! <laughs> but th that's why. It's supposed to be very hot. Okay. That's why he gets out of the car. Oh, okay. But somehow they don't depict that in the movie particularly well, but they still... You know, Quick, get out of the car! There, you there know? is a novel. There is a book. Yes, there's a novel. And yeah. of course, that will have more... It would, be, it would have been interesting to read that. To have a lot of more of the background story. Probably. They made a book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's comics. <laughs> You can get comics. comics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not Graphic only that, novels. there was um, a computer game. There's a computer game. True. There's fan clubs uh, with newsletters, mm -hmm. and I even found the very newsletters. sporadic, very sporadically published <laughs> <laughs> newsletters. And, and there's another phenomenon which we probably should talk about at the end. But yeah, there's there's so many people get into this, and there's all sorts of spin-offs that people do um, separately. Anyway, moving along with the story, what happens next? Mm -hmm. We go to visit a crazy person. Ah, Dr. Lizardo. Dr. Lizardo. Dr. Warfen, I perhaps think we should maybe call him. That's right. right? Well, Lord Warfen. Oh, Lord is this when he's in is the is, is this when he's in the crazy in the in the nut house? Yes. That's right. Yeah. So we come to the nut house. I swear I saw him go through a dimensional portal before that's, the nut house. No. That's after. No, no, that's, no, 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 sure? no. That's, that's during. a flashback that happens. Yes. Did he have a flashback? No, 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 that happens in, next. That happens now, but he is first of all it's in now time in, in the in the Nut house, and then he does the electric electric tongue thing and gets the flashback. Okay. So there's an important plot point here, yes. and that is Doctor Warfen or Lord Warfen, whoever we, we want to call him, is watching the mountain go through the mountain mm -hmm. experiment on the TV. Okay. Because not only is it well, everything we describe is also being broadcast live uh -huh. around the world, <laughs> or at least into that uh, mental uh, institution. <laughs> at least into one particular mental institution. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And so then that sends Dr. Uh, this Warfen guy off into a bit of a tizzy and he starts scrambling about all these mad papers and doing things that mad people do that don't make much sense. Draw on the wall. Most Drawing on the wall as mm. mad people do. Um, and then later on he, um, he hooks himself up to an electric machine and he like zaps his own tongue with electricity because, you know, he's crazy. But we didn't then do a flashback. So what happens during the flashback? It's 1938. He, yeah, it's, it's old school. It's 1938. Yeah. He's partnering up with another scientist, which so just so happens is, to be our... Uh, this he, is Hikita, is his name. Yeah. Dr. Hikita. Is, who's the same bu ba yes. Buckaroo yeah. Banzai yes. scientist. Um, yeah. Um, and there's a tragic accident yes. um, as a result of um, the... Uh, what's his name? The, the Doctor do Lazardo. Doctor Lazardo, where he half goes into another dimension, legs hanging out in our dimension, head in their dimension, and at, as a result of that, he is then possessed. So by, he gets fondled by, by aliens. That's right. on the scalp. That's right. And that possesses him somehow. So and they manage to pluck him back into our dimension, but bringing with him an entity inside him or, or yeah. a, a, some sort of possession. Okay, so this is how Dr. Lazardo becomes Lord Warfen. Yeah, that's right. A couple of other interesting points, I think, to add to it is that they're developing the oscillation overthruster. Uh, in that experiment. In that experiment in 1938. Yep. Um, and also... That's another thing that uh, Dr. Lazardo does. Okay, so Hikita is setting up the, off, you know, the ah, that's right. He's experiment. impatient. Yes, yeah, that's right. And then he says, fuck it, I'm going. <laughs> and the lasers are all like this, and they're supposed to line <laughs> yeah. up at one point, but they don't, and that's how the, the accident happens. So I, I think, 
Hakita probably has flashbacks yeah. when Buckaroo Banzai just, in my opinion, you guys don't agree with me, my, my opinion, he, he also just says, ah, oh, fuck it, let's see if we can drive through a mountain. Okay. And off he goes. I got you. I wonder what they did all those years in between. I mean, the thing was basically ready. It was almost working. Mm-hmm. Just uh, the Dr. Morphin, Dr. Lizardo was too impatient, but essentially the thing was working. Yeah. So what did... They do it Doctor, all the time. What did they do in the between? They raised yeah. Bakaru Banza until he's big enough to drive the car himself. Yeah. I oh. will raise this child because I'm not going through that wall. <laughs> I'll take this little child and raise it. Yeah. The chosen. Applied for funding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. It's a long form there to yeah. fill out. Yeah. And I sort of read it as if Lazardo got institutionalized quite quickly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's just straight after that. Um, all right. Now, the other thing that I think is happening as well is speed is important. Oh, because to enjoy remember, the film. Yes. No, no, to enjoy the film, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but also yes. enter the eighth dimension, right. right? Because he's just on this, like, rickety cart. It, it yeah. literally looked like a, a 19... or even a, 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 an 1800s wheelchair out, made out of wicker. Yeah, yeah. Strapped to some Speaking track. Speaking of wicker, <laughs> look at the, the picture, the, the, the alien, alien technology on the side of the spaceship. <laughs> Which this one? is oh, just two pictures back. Oh there yes, yes, yes. On the side, this is what launches yeah. the, the pod. It's just sort of a little wicker basket with, <laughs> yeah. with a knob on top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not to mention the, the, the peacock feathers, <laughs> the head heads. Um, head. All right, so wicker technology. Okay, so they go faster this time. Imagine. Okay, so what happens next is, um, um, yeah. Okay, what does um, the, the the next important thing that um, John Warfen does is. He makes a telephone call. Ah, uh, yes. And he's going to call up John Big Booty. Yes. He, but before he does that, he, <laughs> Big Booty. Uh, Big guy, Booty, sorry. A, a warden comes in. That's right. right. The That's warden right. takes away the television. That's right. That's right. Because he's been using too much power. Too much power. So these are the... What are the aliens called? Lectroids. The Lectroids. Black what? Lectroids? Or, no, the Black Lectroids are the, the good one. guys. These yep. are red lectures. Well, history is written by the victors. Oh, so, okay. yes. So whether they're the good guys or not. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But they're, the, they're I think, the, the intelligent Tia, and the red lectoids are the, are the warrior cast. Yeah. Yes, right. But why are they called mm-hmm. lectoids? I don't know. Because that's what they live off. They eat electricity. Ah. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's what he's been doing. He's sort of, because he's uh, half alien, yes. he's been drawing all that power mm-hmm. uh, as nourishment. Uh. And they take away his Yes, TV. doesn't the, the warden say, you know, you've used up... That's yeah. right. We're taking 4, away 000, television you know, because it gigawatts. One point one gigawatts already. <laughs> How do you guys do it? You guys are crazy. <laughs> Maybe he's got a big graphics card in his computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got a really inefficient graphics card in his computer. He does manage to build a oscillation overthruster in the Looney House. That's uh, right. Does I, I half built, but he, he, he does he ever use it? No, yeah, because yeah. because no. he needs to see the the ready made one. He's only three no, quarters right. way there. Okay. I think this is actually a critically important point for mm. the story. Is that Dr. Warfen. Lord use, Warfen. Lord you. Warfen. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Don't make me come Actu- over there. <laughs> Actually has his own oscillation overthruster. Which in the end he thinks will work mm. because he uses it. That's and right. everybody goes, no. That's right. Big, That's bo- Big Booty's not keen on it. Big Booty is. No. He Big is booty. not keen. <laughs> it gets called Boot. I'm here to say Boot. <laughs> you mean Booty. And then booty. he corrects his, oh. it's Booty. <laughs> All right, so I think this is an important point that I'm going to sort of discuss towards the end. But anyway, okay, so then he makes his call um, to um, Yo-Yo Dine Systems. That's it. Okay. While systematically taking out the guard at the same time. As you do. Okay, um, and all right, so we've got another thing in the mix now. Uh, John Big Booty, Boote, sorry, and and, uh, Yo-Yo Dine Systems. Yep. All right, um, what happens next is... um, they're on the Banzai bus. Yes, that's right. That's right. right? That's Mobile right. center. Now, I'd assume they've packed up from their big experiment or something or other, and they're all coming back. Now, so they've got this big bus, and it's filled with technology, as well as Shinto shrines. And samurai swords and, mm. and yeah, so, Mika mats. And this is all to mats. serve the, uh, the bizarre... Um, uh, Buckaroo Banzai, like, I don't think everybody else is worshipping a Shinto shrine on a bus. It's just him who wants to have half the bus taken up by a Shinto shrine so he can do his whatever meditating it is. Meditating. He's yeah. meditating yeah. and sword practice. Um, and, um, okay, so what happens then is... Um, 
Yeah, okay. So essentially they, um, yeah, on the bus, John Wolfen escapes. Um, and there's another important thing, and that's, we're picking up something on the scanners, Captain. Ah, that's right. It's the good electrodes yeah, coming down. that's right. Right. So everybody who's following along at home has to open up another small brain compartment in their brain to store another strip of story that's going to be happening. And it's the, it's the good guys. The black mm-hmm. electrodes. Mm-hmm. Now, Tom says that, uh, yeah, uh, you know, history is written by the winners. I don't know if they're actually the good guys. Well, <laughs> yes, because they do threaten to blow off Earth. So. Yeah, that's right, through via the hologram. Uh, that's the hologram that that makes the threat. Yeah. Is yes, that correct? yes, yeah. John, John Ellenberry or whatever. That's right. Pe- perhaps they should just be called the uh, l- lawful good. That's more what they are. Yeah, yeah. And if they have to blow up, you know, a small planet, John Emdell. For the greater the good, they're quite prepared to oh, do that. Sorry, I think we've missed missed the point. Actually, is that, um, or it happens around about now with the bus, and that is that the um, Banzai Institute is going to a Again. bar, and they're going to um, they pick up they pick up um, thing off first, don't they? Jeff, or is that afterwards? Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. Do they pick um, him up? Uh, no, he just shows up. No, no, they pick him no, up. No, no, they, they pick they him up. Pick him up. I think they they meet I, him afterwards. I swear afterwards, he just okay. walks up the road with some luggage. No, he's he's, he's waiting with he's the waiting. luggage. Yeah, right. yeah. The bus pulls up because they're picking up. He, they, they, that must he, come. That right. comes later. Okay. Yep. okay, so they they they're all um, I don't know. They're very happy that the experiment is going well and they they've got a gig on tonight. So <laughs> oh, it's busy, busy, busy. <laughs> listen, listen, let's not gloss over the elephant wearing chaps in the room when they pick uh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum up on the side of the road. What's he wearing? He's what do you mean? Cowhide chat. <laughs> it's not not cow- making fun. These are the furry, the big poofy furry. <laughs> He's not just wearing any old. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, he, ha- he does have to compete with the members of Duran Duran. Duran Duran, you're right. You're <laughs> right. Village people. This is a, right. a, a which is probably why he got a demand yeah, at the same yeah. time. He got the job offer in the first place because the bands I knew that that's how he used to get around town. Was it explained though? Was it explained? Never. No, never. Okay, good. I'm sort of glad it wasn't explained. <laughs> Okay, so um, it's the band. They're about to go on stage. They go on stage and they put, start playing music. And then they, in the middle of a song, whilst the music is blaring. Now, I assume that uh, Buckaroo Banzai has highly, you know, tuned He's samurai ears. to the world and the force. And yes, everything. and yeah. he knows what's yeah. going on. So well. he, stops the band, he stops the band playing. Uh, the, the whole place goes quiet. Um, and so why does he stop playing? Because he can sense someone is sad. Somebody's unhappy in the world, and he's got to fix it. <laughs> Somebody's crying, <laughs> and in in the smoke-filled, uh, heavily populated nightclub bar that they're playing in. Yes. Yeah. Stops everything because he can hear someone crying. He can. So. Well, he can hear somebody not having a good time. That's, that's, that's right. right. He he's got this, you know, Aquaman can talk to fish, <laughs> but his magic power is that he can tell when somebody's not having a good time. Yeah, someone's killing the buzz. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so, who is it? It's well, Ellen. What's the actress? Barkin. Ellen Barkin. Is it Barkin? Yeah. 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 Made famous recently by being the uh, the manager of the casino from one of the uh, Oceans. Thirteen. Yeah. 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 So she has aged incredibly well. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. She's got to be pushing sixty, and she's <laughs> still quite stunning. I, I was actually convinced after watching this that she is the girl. In the aha clip, um, it could be. I checked it. No, it's not. No, no, no that's no. A com- it's a completely different person. Certainly, the right period. And they have the, a similar look, no, but they're two different. People. <laughs> I have to admit, I can confirm they're two different people. <laughs> I, I have to admit, there's blondes with haircut shorts. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the similarity is. I have to admit that looking at her performance, I got an overwhelming sense that she was put in the film for other reasons, like a. Legs. Fascination of the director or the casting couch. I don't know what it was, but what it wasn't was commanding performance to the camera and and uh, motivation in the performance and all that. Well, she would have stuck out if she did. Man, that. she did some weird shit. I mm. think she was. I, I don't know, but I think she was a an actor who had, had you know experience in the past mm. and accomplished some good stuff in the past. I think that that's more the fault of what they gave her to do. Yeah. Could be. Not necessarily her... Why yeah. was she written to the story? 
right? That's so this a good is question. All, all men. They're all men. They're all boys. So they must have thought, producers must have said, oh, you got to have a female in there. It has yep. to be a female and <clears> somebody, <throat> a, there has to be a love interest. Mm. And there's only like three speaking parts for women during the entire film. Mm. Like if you watch this show, it's like, what happened to the other 50% of the human race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But just like Jeff Goldblum's cowboy uniform is is just there without needing an explanation, they give her a character that is not just a pretty female that is a love interest, but she's also the twin sister of his murdered ex-wife, which makes no sense, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't have any bearing on the story in any way. Yeah. But Absolutely. it's just a fact that they put in there, which they could have just away, just just. And her without. name is Penny Pretty, and her sister is Peggy Pretty. So Peggy Pretty and yeah. Penny Pretty, but and they're twins that were separated at birth, yet they have a very similar first name. And it's pretty, right. pretty as in P R I D D Y. Yes, yeah, something yes. like that. Yeah. All right, so let's spin around and let's take our virtual cameras and stick it inside the the face of Buckaroo Banzai, mm -hmm. who's up playing a piano thingy. And or no no he's rocking out on the guitar actually at the time, and then his spider sense goes off that somebody's playing the trumpet as well. Oh, because the trumpet. He can do. His spider sense goes off and he can you know he can tell that somebody's killing the buzz, and then in an instant he fixes his eyes on Penny, pretty, who is drinking herself, who's drinking drowning her sorrows yeah. I believe. Yes, yeah. because she's a useless hopeless idiot and things are all too much yeah. and she can't fucking take mascara it. Mascara streaming down the cheeks. Yeah. Yeah, she's a mess. Right. Just a hot now, mess. what goes through his mind? Because he clocks her and it looks identical to his wife who got blown up <laughs> on their marriage day yep. by the Darth Vader character who we've never seen. Yep. And then what does he do? Oh, he sings to her. He wants to make her feel happy, happy. No, he makes her sing. No, no, no. no, no he no. sings to her. He sings to her because That's right. cause he's the all-caring... He wants Man, to make he, the world. He, he wants must to save fix the every world. last baby. That's right. So if he's concerned about killing people, killing the buzz, I think taking taking a rock out band where everybody's dancing and having a good yeah. time, yeah. and then changing no, it no, to Dan, the most. No, no, Dan. That's not important. That's not important. <laughs> she is unhappy, and that needs to be solved first. Then the people who are normal can okay. keep dancing. Well, well okay. here's my argument: is that you're he, not seeing he, the big picture. Is that he then makes everybody else in the bar unhappy? Yes, and he also entices penny pretty to take some action yeah which is what pull a gun out and <laughs> put it to the head and attempt to commit suicide <laughs> and she misses by a mile <laughs> yes it brings everybody's buzz down although i yes. think um perfect tommy does there's a bit of a hush hush up the back between the bands i gang yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're not and dead, someone questions what yes, he's yeah. doing yeah. and i think he says this is weird um i think he's he, he makes some comment that it's because she looks like his wife Does and, he? he's, and he's weirding out he makes some okay. quick Does he? Okay. comments yeah. so because they're definitely not happy they say no. it's weird yeah. definitely yeah yeah, yeah. I was quest also questioning the mechanics of putting a gun to my head like this. And missing. And then getting, you know, pu pu push my elbow now. <laughs> and she goes, woo! Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then resulted in every member of the band pulling out some kind of Glock. Um, yeah, everyone pulls out Uzi. Some kind of revolver, Uzi. <laughs> Because well, that's what you wear. American. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, American. Right. In New Jersey, though, not not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, he doesn't want anybody killing the buzz, and he ultimately then, uh, Buckaroo, yeah, almost um, drives a woman to, poor woman to suicide. Um, so, anyway, we kind of cut out of that, mm -hmm. and then we're back on the bus. Yep. And then the bus pulls up, and it comes to a halt. We don't know quite where it is, but we do know that our good friend, Sydney Onion... Is standing there, and he's wearing a cowboy outfit. Mm -hmm. As and do. his luggage matches his chaps. Yes, his luggage matches his chaps. Good. That's right. And I, I think he's even got a boombox where he's playing some cowboy music just to complete the ensemble. And uh, <laughs> it appears that um, he is going to join the Banzai Institute. All right, which is good this, news. This film, <clears throat> I think the the producers hated it because at some point they just gave up on the whole crew and <laughs> yeah. and, and, and But then and again, you got to meet the you 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 need to find out who those producers are to really understand that. I don't think they hated it at all. That um, uh, Menha Menheim uh, Menachem Menheim, mm -hmm. who is the producers there. We did a show on it. The, the two guys that ran Canon Films. One is a money man, 
mm. and the other one is a creative. Wants, but they were prolific. They were making so many movies, he couldn't direct all of them. So he brought in a lot of external people, and this is obviously one of them. Yeah. If you think this is weird, right? Every movie that has American ninja something <laughs> is theirs. And it either has a ninja in the title, it has a number in the title. We, we worked out a formula, wasn't mm-hmm. there? It was, it was like a formula. Formula yeah, for it. I remember that. So episode. I, go, I know where you're coming from, but then you've got to see their back catalogue, and, and it's like <laughs> this is, is right up their alley. <laughs> a lot of things are not in the original script. So at some point, a, a script gets greenlit, and they yeah. say, "Yeah, we're going to make this movie." Yeah. I don't think the script would say, uh, you know, Tommy, whatever, Zwiebel, yeah, has will be wearing cowboy yeah. uniform. This is something they made. Here's they, my they theory. Came up later on. Here's my theory. I think the director was quirky. I think he had a really weird sort of sensibility. Came up with a pretty cool story. Um, I think it, it was the Menheim, uh, the, the the guys that own Canon Films, that made it into what it is. Well, I think they because they it's exactly the sort of things that they would do. They and and this. They're famous for it. Directors would openly talk about how crazy these fuckers were. That they would come in and go, "Why does it have to be a, a a guy? Why can't it be a girl to do this and whatever?" And then you know, totally change the plot around. And oh, no, we need to take that character out and not give a reason, and then walk off the set. Just make it happen, or we won't give you the money and this sort of stuff. And and so I think some of those plot holes could potentially not be the fault of the director, but more the fault of the uh, the, the crazy. Um, yeah. Maybe that's my theory. Yeah, well, my my theory is that it was so silly. The director thought, "I can't go half half. I've got to. <laughs> I'm all in. Going hard. hard. <laughs> yeah. What I like about the director, he he's still he's still on board. Mm. Like when you see him interviewed years later, he treats it like it's a real thing. That's the, his the, film. That's yeah. his his legacy. Yeah, like the Bonsai Institute is a well, real thing. What else thing. has he done? W.D. Richter. Yeah, I didn't look into that. But continue, Dan. Where are we at? Um, well, look, I'll, I'll add an extra piece to that little little discussion, and that mm-hmm. is that the writer and the, the co-writer or the writer and the producer Ooh. were good mates, and they spent eight years writing this story. Really? And um, the guy who wrote it sort of got really into it, and he kept sending material back and forth, and the pair of them apparently went on reference exercises where they'd go to a brain surgeon and they'd watch some brain surgery. Mm-hmm. So my explanation of what this, why this story is the way that it is, is that they had too many ideas. They had a thousand and one friggin' ideas. So many ideas that it bursts out into lore and background stuff. Yep. And then they wanted to cram all of this good juice that they'd talked about personally for years about. Mm. And in between cramming it in, they also forgot to tell us what the hell was going on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know and i'm sure when those two guys watch it they're like yeah that's when when you know he in the background was talking to that other guy that we didn't put in the movie and now that they're here yeah that's right i like that theory i like that theory <laughs> incidentally the um, the director wrote some pretty famous stuff yes, yes. big big trouble in little china which is another yes. weird film yes. which i love i love big trouble oh, yeah, in yeah, little yeah. china um also, Brubaker, which is a famous, um, serious prison type film with Robert Redford. Yeah. Yep. Um, Home for the Holidays, Stealth, um, All Night Long, some Dracula film, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. No, right. no, that was already an existing film, so he probably wrote a yeah wrote the he, screenplay. screenplay. That's yeah, right. yeah. But that's pretty. That's pretty. Impre- that's his writing credits. Mm-hmm. The, the the director. Mm. I thought he wrote this, but he didn't. Mm. No, yeah, that was no, Macro. No, Mike Rauch, as I would say, but they keep calling him Rauch. Yes, that's right. Americanization. Yeah. All right, so they meet up with um, with um, Sydney Onion, and they instantly Buckaroo Banzai gives him a nickname, and his nickname is New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. Now it turns out that they are outside the prison. Ah, ah the that's jail. Right that's right. Already. That's so where. That's where are. he's waiting. He's waiting outside the prison. Yeah. So Buckaroo obviously called him up. Immediately after the band, and he's like, ah. "Hey, Sydney, oh, look, this chick just my ex, my sister of my ex-wife, tried to commit suicide when I sung her a song just now. Anyway, <laughs> meet me at the jail. Meet me at the jail. <laughs> <laughs> we can't pick you up. We got to get to the jail. Meet us there. It sounds like a conversation we we have with Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, deja vu, coming yeah. back again. So anyway. he's on. So so the cowboy's on board." So they get the cowboy on board, yeah, and he goes and they in. Bust Penny out of jail. He goes in there, yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect, 
Perfect Tommy. Is it Perfect Tommy? Yep. Perfect Tommy has to give up his jacket. To, to yeah, for the woman, yes. Yeah, because he's not happy about it until he's reminded of how perfect that he's he is. perfect. Uh, yeah. And she's out. Yes. Because he says so. Mm. He pulls a lot of weight in the world. He's very famous. Absolutely. And if Bakaru says she's out of jail, then she's yeah. out of jail. And he offers to take full responsibility. That's right. For I'll vouch once, for it. Yeah. So True. He can obviously, he's a man with a certain amount of authority in the world. Mm. I mean, he talks he, to the president. He, he talks to the president often. So Absolutely. Direct line, video line to the president. He's a Steve Bannon of his time. Just a nice <laughs> Which is around oh. the time. This is around the time in the film oh. that he does talk to the president. Yeah. Yes, it's coming up. Well, let's go into the next bit. The and the next bit is the press conference. Yeah. Which is lit just before the Harley Davidson convention. Let's quickly yeah. run in there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. I love look, that. Look, look, look. We just got through a mountain. Uh, can yeah. you book us in? Uh, well, we've got a Harley Davidson conference. Yeah. Come on, have an hour. Well, give us half an hour. <laughs> just in the foyer. Just a few yeah. chairs. What I will admit, what I will uh, mention that... This film had unbelievable continuity. Like, somebody there was actually controlling the continuity because the mentioning of the Harley Davidson thing didn't need to be mentioned to make it match up that when he was doing the chase scene later on that there's all these Harley Davidsons um, there actually, and then the product thing. They don't say actually Har Harley Davidson, they say a motorcycle. That's right. Yeah. But the fact that they say it yeah. actually makes the thing over here make sense, sense when they get it out yeah. there. So whoever was reining in continuity... In script, you know, someone stands on set there and makes sure the continuity. Someone's realised, oh, hang on, so we need no, to say the, that here. Just the lovely touch of having mm. the the, the defence minister, yeah. who is an important person, and Bakker Rubenza, and they are doing a press conference in front of eight people. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, just the lovely thing that they actually say, oh, we got to be, there's a, there's a bikey convention coming up and we got to be quick about this. <laughs> That's right. It just loves the, the character. It adds some great character. Absolutely. To the yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, one of my questions is, why is uh, Penny up there? Absolutely. She had yeah. nothing to do with anything. And she, it was the worst acting moment for her in the whole surely film. Surely. She did some bizarre shit, looking off, looking down. You could, she was trying to make out that she was trying to work shit out and they're talking about I over over thrusters and I, all this I, I shit. I think shit. in the she's, script, she's never heard staring of off to... I think, because in the, the joke, which doesn't work here, is that she actually understands. Mm. Yes. And she, she knows about this stuff. Yeah. And also she needs to be there so when Professor thingy gets abducted, she grabs the over thruster. Yeah. She but needs to be why? there to grab That's right. But why is she there? Because of the script. Yeah, you've got to have the Danzel actually have the the device that everyone's looking for. Yeah, she's there probably because of the story. Another reason that perhaps she's there is because if you read the backstory, this this back law, you know, it turns out that she's not just some useless prostitute. She's a professor of thermodynamics and a uh -huh. linguist who speaks nine thousand languages. Which and comes across. She she projects that well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Try to blow brains out in a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't know. Anyway. Do we know why she was upset in the nightclub? No, I think she got kicked out of she the house. She was kicked out of the house, was, and lost her job lost or whatever, job so she goes and... Down on her luck. Buys $15 worth of whiskey. <laughs> and then a gun. And a gun. Um, <laughs> can I have $15 worth of whiskey and a gun, please? Oh, come on, she's American. She's born with a gun. <laughs> yeah. You're right. All Call right. Call that a gun. So, um, so they're talking about the... Um, the uh, success yes. of their um, experiment when suddenly they're interrupted by a phone call. That's right. Shouldn't do bang on the table you can too take, much. You can take that phone call down in the uh, phone booth a phone in the hallway. <laughs> that's right. It came through a phone booth somehow. <laughs> that's where you put phone booths. And it turns out it's the president of something on the line. <laughs> and uh, Buckaroo needs some clarification. It turns out it's the president on the line. Yeah, yeah. So he... Uh, he um, and the president... Off? Let's bring the picture up here because... For some reason, the president is but hang on, hang traction. On. It's not the president, right? Oh, hang on. It's a prank. Yeah, yeah. Call. Wait, wait, wait. We it's can't. A prank call. Yeah, yeah. That's a red herring. Uh, okay. You got to be on your toes with this movie, right? Gotcha. You be on your toes. <laughs> yeah. It's a MacGuffin. That's, That's right. right. That's right. So he goes down there and they, he gets in the phone booth and um, gets his brains zapped. That's right, and because it turns out that it's not the president mm. at all. Mm. It's the aliens from Planet Ten who've. Who are worried about the eighth dimension and they're going to blow up Earth if Banzai doesn't do what he, they tell him. Yeah. But they're the good guys. Yeah. Well, the slightly less bad the guys. Lawful. Yeah. Because, the they, because they put the other guys there as in, in the mountain as a prison thing or in the eighth dimension. 
that was their That's version right. of imprisoning them. Mm. Yes. And uh, and now uh, our hero has inadvertently yeah. released their leader. Yeah. Or give, no, them, no, give them their no. leader the ability to return back to planet 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Via the 8th dimension. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's true. Now, then what must happen is something very important, is that the aliens from planet 10 mm-hmm. on their spaceship that's orbiting the Earth mm-hmm. must have a small device yep. that they hook up to the speaker of the phone that they're talking to Banzo with, which sends a radioactive electrical chemical charge down the wire yep. through outer space and into the telephone booth and out the ear and zaps mm. Banzai in the head, giving him new special powers. Mm. He can see aliens. To detect aliens. Yeah. Now, that's some pretty awesome technology that we're dealing with here. Yep. They could have just given him some weird sunglasses yep. to detect them as well. Well, they, they give him some weird sunglasses later on. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we will discuss, I'm sure. So, anyway. So, like a crazy man, he runs back into this press conference. And he can see that some of the people, some of the reporters, are not, well, they're not, well, anyway, so are not what they appear to be. And outs them publicly. Yes. Yells at them like a crazy person. And wants everyone to shoot them. Yes. Um, which, of course, means that the game is up. And so John Big Booty, Big Bootay, mm. sorry. And makes he's his ciders. Yep. Makes his move. And it, the chase is... The game is afoot as well as being up. The game is afoot. Because the chase sequence starts, which coincidentally uses the, one of the motorbikes that had turned up for the motorbike. <laughs> what conference. it just happened to have a coincidence. big Harley <laughs> Davidson <laughs> sign. There's a, there's a motorbike convention. The oh, in it. Yeah. So oh, remember sorry, that they've, they've grabbed Did you the love girl. it when he took off on the bike and the guy at the back says, You can't take that. That's Bakaroo Banzai! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What a guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can tell it was recorded way after the principal photography. They just shoved it in there. So the thing about Bakaroo Banzai's fame is that everybody knows him and you, he's sort of described as famous, but I wanted to see a statue of Bakaroo Banzai somewhere or posters on the wall. Yeah. You know, it's just random people who say, oh, is that Bakaroo Banzai? Mm. But they do talk about... They, they the comic have books it. and stuff. Yeah, they have all these uh, But we never see it. Merchandising... No, that's you know, true. Um, you know, show it, don't tell it. Yeah. No, don't say, oh, he's and famous. I did make a note during the chase sequence, there's a lot of little veginettes happening in the corridors like a Fellini film. Mm. There's a couple making out, two chefs uh, yeah. <laughs> arguing. That's right. There's all these little things in the background. Really? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During the chase. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what they've got... Um, Penny, and she's got the overthruster. Is that right? Yes. I, I yes, mean, at this stage, she has. She grabbed it off the press conference table. That's right. Decided to steal it, right, um, out from under everyone. No, have they got? No, they haven't got her yet. No, they got the professor. They, they got, got the professor. professor. Yes. In the box. Sorry, sorry. They don't have her. No, no. Yes. Okay. So they got the professor. Um, okay. And so they whiz away. Now we need to then. Um, we need to then um, cut to. The uh, Jim Bob and 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 whatever the the country hicks out shooting ah oh, yeah. uh, yes on the um, right because the the uh, black lectroid aliens from Planet Ten in their spaceship have dropped a probe That's onto right. Earth like a pod. Okay, so and the pod. Do the, do the hunters shoot it down, or is it? Um, supposed they to do land fire. They, it shoot, they shoot at it, and and which, is, I, is, which is, causes is, it to crash. Is yeah. that what co- it does? Which, yeah. Okay, which makes you wonder: it can span galaxies. Yeah. Yet some buckshot takes it yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> like a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got re-entry, you know, sorted. <laughs> they just haven't got up the technology to get it shotgun proof yet. Gal- galactic peace brought undone by a couple of rednecks. It's <clears throat> always the way, isn't it? So, um, <laughs> there's a scene which you can imagine where these two guys, you know, they see the alien thing and they, they you know. Um, but then what it happens is that we can see that there are aliens inside it and they're on some sort of a mission. And then the top of the thing. Bert and Bubba. Let's call Bert them and Bubba. Bert Let's and Bubba. call them by their name. Bert and Bubba. Sorry to disrespect Bert and Bubba. Call anyway. them by their name. Um, Bert and Bubba see uh, uh, the, the top of it opens, yep. and one of the aliens <laughs> who looks like the, a Rastafarian he gets ejected out of the sphincter door. Gets, yes. Comes out of the sphincter, falls off, yeah. dies, <laughs> hits his head, and dies. So once again, the universe right brought undone by rednecks and stupidity now. 
<laughs> How many people do we fit in the pod? Well, one has to survive and carry the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need one to die. We need one to self-destruct. Yeah. Three. Three will do it. So, right. But that means we've got one, one left over. Yeah. Oh, we'll just have him fall off the spaceship and kill himself. <laughs> now, now, interesting fact, maybe, maybe, maybe not. The mothership that sends the seed out, the, the pod from... It doesn't even slip. It just <laughs> That's right. He looks down. I think he looks down to see the sphincter close and then crumble. How bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> the bad acting. It's bad when, when, John, when, when, when John Lithgow hits the two scientists together. Yeah, that, yeah, act, that, that connection is not believable. But it's, this is worse. <laughs> yeah. Leans back against the rock. And Absolutely. <laughs> And turns back into the alien, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can see. That's occupational yeah. health and safety. <laughs> that thing requires a ladder. Well, it had, it had a, a it's red. probably not, Yeah, it's probably not properly landed yeah. because the wings were shut off. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Now, the mothership that it, space slime or something. that it ejected from, did it remind you of a piece of coral? Yes, yes. it was a piece of coral. <laughs> it was, it a, was piece a piece of coral. That <laughs> someone just happened to come in to work with one day. Yes. <laughs> and the director said, It was just mounted some like lights <laughs> onto it. <laughs> just put some lights in it. Some lights in it, it yeah. worked. Okay. All right. So the alien who falls off and um, accidentally falls, accidentally kills himself also has something with him. He yes. decided to bring. So again, let's put ourselves in the zone. I'm an alien. I'm about to get out of the spaceship. Oh, I forgot to bring. I met, need to bring my Buckaroo Banzai comic. Uh, okay. Oh, he does have a comic with him. That's right. The latest Banzai. edition, no less. The latest. <laughs> Which they got from Planet Ten. I mean, right. they have. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. No, I don't know. They've got a subscription. <laughs> yeah, yeah Through the 10th dimension somehow. I don't know. <laughs> um, all right. But even though he dies, that's tragic, of course. Luckily, there's another yeah. black space Rastafarian Jesus inside the, the spaceship, and he comes out. Yep. Okay. Now, what happens next is that um, things heat up yep. because... The next people to arrive on the scene are, of course, John Big Boote. Well, the 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 chase uh, resulted at, at one point. There, Buckaroo is chasing the van with and the, Boote and um, the, or no, the two Boote offsiders, yeah. and they and run him off the road. And they run him off the road. He goes off a little mini cliff, whatever, and uh, asked the boys to come and pick him up. Yep. And so they're heading back to the the institute. Yep. Yeah. Well, they have to home base. Free the professor first. No, that well, they have the professor with him. We're talking about we haven't John Big Boote. No, he's in the van. Yes, he's, he's in, in the, the van. Oh, so they have to turn around. Yes. Well, they do a big spin out turn around. I don't quite know why they turned around. Well, the they're going back. To, they go and pick up bu uh, Buckaroo. They all go back to the. So who's they? Who, Hang on, who, the, the rest of the band. Buckaroo? Oh, yeah, band. no, he's... He, he's talking about the band. Doesn't he call? To, he's yeah, talking yeah, about the He aliens. calls them and they pick him up they on have, the they chopper. They have to go and pick him up. We're not there yet. No, 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 you're jumping ahead. Oh, so something happens before he, that. Oh, yeah, there's stacks mm. of stuff in between. Well, Remember, so what, Buckaroo's lying in a ditch the whole time? No, with Bubba. Remember that um, John Big Boote um, turns up with the cop. That's right. And there's a bit of a fight. Flashes And some, they try to bash right. their way into the, the, right. the ship. Yo, right? you're dying. That's right. Okay. Okay. While they're doing that, and just generally causing, causing a ruckus. Now, so I don't know quite how they found the crashed spaceship, but they did. They they, they were um, driving away, and then they got the signal that the spaceship is in orbit, uh. and they went, turned back, because they sensed the thing coming down. And, and these things... Black electrodes are coming. Okay. And, and that's when they were... That's yep. who they were after. And they're quite lucky it didn't land in China yep. or... Any of, the but other, just any right of those other places, just well, the, a mere the five or six kilometers away. <laughs> yes. The spaceship is not in 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 in, in a circular. It's in geostationary. It's in geostationary orbit, just above Buckaroo Bay. Yo, you're dying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. specifically? Yes. I, okay. I, all right. I, I, uh, it could be tracking him. Well, maybe because he's the reason why they're here. Yeah. Mm. Maybe he is the center of this universe. Okay, but it all hangs together, of course, because Buckaroo Banzai is chasing John Big Boote, and he finds their van. Yeah, and he breaks in, and inside is Doctor Hikita. Ah. Right, and this is where we have the next memorable moment. That's right, <laughs> is that when he got zapped with the electricity that gave him special powers, there was a formula that made that happen that he managed to remember but he could only write it in biro on his hand That's right. 
Okay, and he needed to get that formula, it's very important, to Dr. Hakita so he can synthesize a new method for the rest of the Banzai crew to be able to detect the aliens. Yeah. That's and the way that he does that is by licking his palm and then slapping it on Akita's forehead. <laughs> because that works. To make, because that works. <laughs> yeah. To well, make a forget, reverse he, image. He does say that he's been ionized. Yeah. Which, but it needs to be a reverse image so Hikita can see it in the mirror. Ah, it works. But it. See, this, it all hangs Perfect. together, man. It all hangs together. <laughs> it's I the tell most you. brilliant continuity. script ever written. <laughs> yes. It's continuity. That is actually genius. All right. Um, now, this is all a bit of a, um, a you know, a bit of a trouble. There's, there's a bit of people going on. How does Buckaroo get out of this mess and get back to civilization? <laughs> With his little helpers that he has all around the world. Uh, what are they the called? Father, son, the father, These son. particular ones are the Blue Blazers. The Blue Blaze Irregulars. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. not the Father, Son crew? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 But he's got them all over the planet. Irregulars. There's something oh, about a six-year-old running club. around with an SK, uh, AK-47, <laughs> yeah? He's part of the team. And taking people out as well. Yeah. I've said it before. I'll say it again. He's American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. American. <laughs> American. Um, now, um, so the call goes out to the Blue Blaze Irregulars. Buckaroo's in trouble. So calling all Blue Blaze, anybody in the, the vicinity who happens to be a registered Blue Blaze irregular? That's it. And has a helicopter to quickly get there? That's right. Well, that was just a lucky bonus. <laughs> yeah. that he happened to have a helicopter. What another coincidence. Which plays in the plot later on when the bad guy needs to escape with the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, this is all... You're all carrying right. on as if it's a coincidence and not art. Well, it's design. <laughs> it's, it's by design. So Buckaroo's just about to get run over when out of the sky falls a rope ladder and he doesn't do a double take or nothing he just yeah. there's a ladder up yep. yeah he just grabs it this because see right. ask me mortals we would do a double take we <laughs> yeah. may even be surprised yeah, yeah. but not but buckaroo just mm -hmm. yeah. all right then so um that takes him back to their um the lair back to their lair now which we've actually got a diagram of. Absolutely. Flashing. Somebody. Oh, do we? Yeah, we have a. Let yeah. me show you. Yeah, there yeah, it is. yeah, this is awesome. Underground complex 88. Oh, 88. And the number plate on the bus is also 88. Yeah. And BB, Bakarubanza, looks like 88. Mm. There's, there's oh, look, a, there's even the rocket car. Yeah, yeah, this is the bus park, car park here. There's a rocket car, a jet car egress north, <laughs> and then there's an, a jet uh, egress <laughs> south. Someone's put a lot of time and effort into this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so this is not just a rocket test car. This is a jet car that they have. Yeah, yeah. It's their well, drive. Their, it's their well, they, week. They have to store it somewhere. Yeah, it's their weekly drive around car. This is their, their, what they use for when they go shopping. <laughs> yeah. Except it has no boot storage space. Yeah. It's, there is, it looks like a rotating table in the car bay there. There's engineering yeah. shops. I'll tell you, there's something that these guys missed, right? They've got all of this law. They've got the Blue Blazer Reg. They've got the Banzai Institute. They've got um, Perfect Tommy. But yet, they have jet car. Yeah. Why didn't they think up some fucking cool name for the jet car? <laughs> the Banzai monster truck, or you know, the Banzai rocket oscillator truck thing. Why don't they have females? Is this some sort of homoerotic club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a sausage fest in here. There's not much, not much going on in here other than uh, the boys. They have one female. They, they have the, the no, no. The, they've the, got well, the secretary. Oh, there's Mrs. another female thing. It says yeah, Mrs. Johnson. Johnson's yeah, kitchen. She's one of the three. That, the kitchen. Oh yeah, they need it's to Mrs. Cook. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Mrs. Johnson's kitchen. She's there to make the there food for the, the boys. Yes. And she's also their secretary. Come on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> She is the secretary. And, and easy on the eyes yeah, on, after the long journeys. Why I, is she, I don't know why she's called Mrs. Johnson. You would imagine that she's like an old fuddy duddy 80 year old, but now it turns this out that she's. a Titan 2 missile here. What? Oh, a Titan 2 missile. It's a Titan 2 missile. This is what I do love about Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, so we've got a missile in a this missile silo just next to That's what this is. It's the atrium with uh, skylight. Skylight music, hanging plants, <laughs> koi a pond. koi pond, <laughs> and recording facilities. Excellent. Next to the Titan II missile. <laughs> and their rocket car. Okay, so they're back at home base. Okay, so I think what happens here is they do a little bit of detective work. Yep. Now, what do they find out? And I think the one who comes up with the brilliant idea is New Jersey. Yeah. And what is it that he works out? Oh, remember. that they're all named John. Is that it? That's, that's part of it. Thing? That's yeah. their that's their research. They got computers going the on. Yo Yo Dime is involved. The yo Yo Dime is involved. Oh, the whole hoax, the the alien invasion uh, hoax. He hears He's, the phrase. Um, uh, 
what's the location? There's a yes. yeah. Uh, the location's Gray. the same something. There's the same location at the Martian hoax by, from Orson Welles. Yes, yeah, the Martians yeah. which is factual. Like the the radio play that sent people grove. in panic. Um, yeah. Miller's Grove. Miller's Grove. Miller's Grove. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that that's probably exactly what it was. And he put it together that it was. That's the same location that that the famous radio hoax uh, was based on, which was based on a fake radio show on Halloween. He got it for he, he worked it out from the date. Yes, from the date and from the name and from the, name. from the name. He put the two together and realised Halloween. That's right. And his it's Jeff Oshawa. Goldblum quirky way um, led him to. Um, the radio play, which was the hoax, which was on Halloween night, the same date, the same year, and, and Miller's Grove. And they realised that it wasn't a hoax. hoax. But then Orson Welles was forced, into, coerced, coerced into yep. saying it was a hoax. Now, what this tells us, though, and I'm asking for confirmation here, that the other bad guys—that's where they come from. Yeah, that's because we know the main bad guy, bad guy, came from the experiment, the eighth dimension, yeah. ultimately. But, but the tell other me go- how. Yeah, that's that where Tom and I struggle, struggle a little I struggle bit with here. understanding how did Lord Voldemort get all his 500 employees out of... How did he free them out of the 8th dimension? Or did they not even come from the 8th dimension? Is it the 8th no, no, dimension is where the, they were... Um, I th- where they were did they come I think from when planet, I read in planet 10. Wikipedia, they did that um, invasion. The uh, Black... Heck, uh, what are they called? Lectoids. Lectoids. The red lectoids. Captured uh, Lord Wolfram and put imprisoned him in the eighth. And dimension. also his five hundred followers. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but I don't think John Big Booty is Boute is one of those five hundred followers. No. He just turned up on Earth a, a whole bunch of time ago and has just been hanging around at Yo-Yo Dine Systems, just tinkering in the garage. Did he well, turn up in 1930? So yes, yes. There was that the warrior cast, and they had a putsch, a, a queue, and and became and they got overthrown. And mm. Lord Wolfen is the, the leader, mm. and he must have had his right hand men, it, which went is, to space jail, and they went to space jail, including I think John Big Booty. No, and no, no, when no, no, once no, no, no. he was possessing Emilio, Doctor Lazardo, Lazardo, yes, then he somehow found a way to. Ref- Free all his little minions mm. out of jail and brought them over to Earth, but their spatial crash crashed oh, and maybe. destroyed. And so they founded Yoyodyne to build a new oscillation overthruster, to build a new spaceship to go back to Planet Ten to take over Might control. Be like that. that that'll fit. That was the idea. I think that'll fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's but go how? with that. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't I think understand we have to. how. Because I'm with Tom. I can't. I don't. I'm not sure where all the. All the bad guys came from at Yo-Yo Nine. No, I'm not either. Continue, and I shall Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yes, it, it appears that something that the the Orson Welles thing that was made up that was fake that appeared to be true, yep. but it's people thought it was true, and then Orson Welles said that it was fake. Turns out that it's actually true. Yep. And meanwhile, while they're doing all this detective work, <clears> they're <throat> being infiltrated, mm. right? The, the bad guys are sneaking in the back door of the secret base. Right, so John Big Boutte is making his move again. To try to get the overthruster. That's right, because this is the overthruster is an important part of the movie. Yes. Now, <clears throat> hot on their tails, though, is um, is um, Black Electroid Rastafarian Jesus. John yes. Parker. Yes. John Parker. Thank That's you very much. John Parker. And we also find out, interestingly, that the aliens have some special powers... One of them is the ability to jump over walls. Uh huh. And yes. run. His his running style was quite special as well. And yes. they have a little yes. little sound effect when they jump higher than humans can jump. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that we know. Yep. Um, and yes, then they infiltrate. And um, okay, so what happens then? Then there's basically there's going to be a big fight. There's there's some mm. whilst searching for the overthruster in the base. Mm. There's some death kills. Mm. Um, there's some chucking of the organic ninja stars no no, no they spit them. They go, that's right spit they do they spit, yes. they spit the uh, spider sucky that's right. yes things and unfortunately one of our one of our, our main, beloved heroes. main guys yes gets hit in the spine yes gets hit in the spine and mm. it's rawhide clancy brown he dies goes, yeah. he goes down yeah yeah, yeah. and it's in the death. law he was the first of the uh, hong kong cavaliers he was the oldest member oh really the tragedy yeah. really mm. it's a tragedy yeah um 
And also, um, Sam, somebody other dude dies as well. But yeah, whatever. he was he was being stood over by a doctor, a fully qualified doctor, and he kept saying, "I can't feel my legs." But they decided not to check his back. <laughs> yes, you yes. Know, because John Parker said there's no antidote. Full stop. Well, oh there yes, you go. that's right. There's John, no antidote. Yeah. You you've had it. Space Jesus says something. Mm. You believe it. Mm. Yeah. All right, but then what happens? The what most you, important plot point. Got? Oh. Warfarin is the leader of the Red Electroids, a race of alien reptiles who wage war against Planet 10. After being defeated by the less aggressive Black Electroids, Warfarin and his group were banished into the 8th dimension. Lizardo's failed experiment accidentally released Warfarin, and he soon brings many of the Red Electroids to Earth. How? In an incident that was reported in the 1938 <laughs> by Orson Welles and his radio broadcast. Um, and and later on, yeah, Orson had to retract. So basically, when he broke out of the eighth dimension, he'd been imprisoned. Yep. He brings them his somehow his supporters from space. So he could down. have either done it with another overthruster device, mm. or there's a way to. They've got a ship. Well, can, the whole point is that he out. doesn't have an overthruster. Well, right. yeah, because he can't get off the... And so no, he and does if there have was an a, overthrust, so that's well, it doesn't other, work. If he had one, he'd go back that's to... Right. to um, that's right, they uh, wouldn't be looking for this one. Yeah. And, well, and look, I'm going to beg to differ and say that he... And this is weird thing in the story, is that he does actually have an overthrust that does actually work. Right. But does it? We never see it work. He has one. It shoots all of the lasers. They just couldn't get the lasers to, uh, to line right. up. Yeah. Oh, you mean the one that he got halfway stuck through the wall with? No, 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 the one that he brings from his um, mental asylum that he's been building out of paper clips and staples and chewing gum. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, right. he does have the lasers. They go through the wall. Up. Instead of going yeah. through the dimension, they go through the wall and Instead. fly off. So when we, more realistic. When, we get, when we get there, we'll get there, and this is where it all sort of comes together. So okay. okay. John Big Boutte makes his escape, and he's got a bit of a victory. Because <clears throat> he, takes, he takes the girl. He takes the girl. Yeah. Who has the overthruster. Who takes the overthruster. But John Big Boutet doesn't know that he has the girl... The overthruster has... The girl has the overthruster. And correct. just before that happens, we do learn the story about her being a twin and the, the, the story about his... Uh, about Booker Banzai losing his wife. That's they right. They have that brief uh, exposition. Yeah. Yes, we do. Now, I need to bring something up. During the chase through the secret base... Uh -huh. Now that we know that the aliens are in the secret base because we're finding dead people around. Yep. They walk past a big, heavy piece of machinery with a watermelon in it. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Do we know why the watermelon's there? I, I I've know, got one answer. I know what the, what the director says while the watermelon yeah. is there, but why it's there in the film, that will never get explained. The DVD commentary revealed, the director revealed during the DVD commentary that the watermelon was placed there to test whether the studio was watching the dailies. Is that yeah. the claim? Yes. That's what he said. And proved that they weren't watching the dailies, at which point they said, yes, oh, we're leaving good. it in. <laughs> We've got free reign. We can do with this movie whatever we like now because they've given up on us. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's what the cool. watermelon's for. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's good. <laughs> but from within the context of the story, I don't like it. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. It's because just it, one more weird thing that doesn't ball. get explained. Because um, put it um, on a pile. Because the guy just says because uh, Jersey, New Jersey asks yeah. why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll says, talk. We'll tell you later. Later. Yeah. I used to do theatre sports back in the day, um, and the the golden rule when you're doing theatre sports is you're up on stage with another person, and you don't know what you're supposed to do. And you don't you don't know what they're going to do. You don't know what you're going to do, and so if the person next to you says. Hey, Jim Bob, how about we go down the old fishing pole, see if we a uh, fishing hole, see if we can catch some catfish. And if you respond, no. That's right. I don't yeah. want to do that. You've got to go with it. <laughs> you actually have to respond, yes, we're going to the, we're going to catch catfish. That's yeah. right. Let me get my mobile phone yeah. and my worms. Um, and so that's my complaint about this thing. It's like, so... Why is there a watermelon in this room? And it's like... That's not important. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Don't worry. <laughs> I thought it was to insinuate it was some part of some initiation. It could have been. I think the theories are... The doors are open for theories. Yep. And I mean, they could have at least said, I don't know. I don't know why that's there. At the we time, do all the radiation experiments on Wednesdays. 
I guess at the time they weren't sure that this was actually going to make it into the final cut. But there's a lot of theories. Like there's a lot of fan theories. There's one where Buckaroo is always looking to help the poor without having to deal with governments. So the watermelon is being tested to withstand the forces of being dro- airdropped. <laughs> That that works for me. Because it fits. Why not? Uh, (laughs) It's in a big vice, isn't it? Yes. (laughs) You might be able to drop it out of space, but will it survive if rednecks shoot it with their shotguns? Well, that's That's, it. That's the question for the ages. Nothing survives a redneck with a shotgun. All right. So, um, moving on, we get... um, We essentially get... What happens next? We get John Big Boutte. He's he's back at base. John Warfen um, is... Well, Lord Warfen, excuse me, is back at base at Yo-Yo Dine Systems. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they cover her with honey. That's right. That's they right. cover with her and strap her into a weird-ass bondage machine. Torture Which, uh, which thing, has a slow thing. snail crawling towards her eyeballs. Yep. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, the, the reason oh, that's right. That slug thing. Yeah, I got that. The reason why they cover her in honey... Oh, it's the ants. It's because of ants. Because you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And you yeah. will also notice that there was a very large tarantula on her thigh. They don't go for the honey, though. That's right. No, no, no. They're, they're sort of attacking it from different angles. Right. They've got the honey going on one arm, and they've got yeah. the tarantula working on yeah. the other leg. Right. And the snail coming towards the eyeball. And this yes. is in an yes. effort for her to reveal the location of the overthrust. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a bit it like Star Wars. Because I they started didn't even to think, ask me any questions. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I got as well. I started to think there was... You know how there was Big Boutte... And he had two offsiders. The tall, scrawny guy that Vincent is in... Vincent Schiavelli. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which we see he in every movie He seemed to have a problem 80s. with her. Yeah. He had a distinct problem with oh, he her. he likes to kill people. He was shoving her into the water, stormwater, you know, and there was there was roughage. He was <laughs> chucking her around. <laughs> and um, there was they weren't asking any questions and they didn't seem to care too much. But also, she's not really wearing that much. At this point, her trousers are torn. She's wearing a blouse and No, she's some actually wearing a samurai... Very revealing... Yeah, okay. it's a samurai, samurai thing. Um, there's, it's, it's almost like samurai chaps. Isn't yes, it? it's, it's got, samurai chaps. Exactly, they're split on, ah. the, they're on both sides. But, but and they I think modest samurais also wear pants but under she, their samurai but, chaps. Yeah, but she tied it up to make it look like that. But I'm cool. asking where a where is she keeping the bloody overthruster? And B, why in, aren't they finding it? She's keeping it in the transparent <laughs> plastic handbag <laughs> in the transparent. that they apparently didn't look in. <laughs> but John Big Booty does go through the entire handbag while while Vincent well, is, is putting honey on her. He's rummaging. Up later. The handbag. Oh, is he? Yes, he's taking things out <laughs> of it. Right. You're right, but someone turns up later and finds it in the in handbag. The hand- that's right, yes. the Minister of Defence. <laughs> but no less. It, maybe that's a dig at a woman's handbag. It's like you can never find anything, <laughs> <laughs> even if it's transparent. <laughs> yes, and actually makes bleeping noises. <laughs> that's right, it did too. Continuously. Okay. All right. So, um, then what? What happens is that um, the Banzai Institute. They get called. Well, they work out Yo-Yo Dime is where all the bad guys well, are. Well, y- y- Lord Warfen calls them up with one of his taunting thingos, That's you know. Right. That's right. Oh, well, you'll never get us. Mm. See? Idiot. Yeah, see? <laughs> Slams the phone down and it's like, all right, let's go and get him. But they also, also figure out, yeah, that they're all aliens because they all are called John. 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 In the same town, they're called John smallberries yes <laughs> he was yes. the guard yeah. yeah he was the guard john smallberries <laughs> and I, I have to admit i really love the general um if he was a general i don't know whether he was a cia guy or a general the actor yeah. but when he, he started good. storming through yeah, gates yeah, yeah. and whatever you know <laughs> and the guy says stop he says no i'm going through and, <laughs> yeah. and he's just it's uh, off limits yeah. not for me son. Yeah, yes i'm the secretary of defense i can go anyway big boots <laughs> Does he get? He, he almost gets killed, doesn't he? He gets sort of manhandled and chucked, but he, he gets, comes comes he to gets again, doesn't he? Lifted up by his by his necktie. That's right. This is yeah, not my right. planet, Monkey Boy. Yeah, that's right. And Monkey <laughs> Boy gets monkey mentioned boy, a yeah, couple yeah, of times. That's where, the, that's where the, I'm sure this is the film where it came from. It probably is, Monkey yeah, because it's like the the bad guys' uh, insult yes. that they've used a couple of times. All right, so we also have to remember that there's a discussion with the president that happens sometime around about this time. <laughs> that's right. And our aliens, uh, who we thought were the good guys are going to nuke Russia and that will mean Russia will nuke us being America and then civilization will of course come to an end and just cause he's in traction do, do we know why he's in traction again it does not we know no. why but it doesn't get explained in the movie at yeah. all he has he has just had a rectal operation <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's in there being uh, you know relaxed 
All right. Really? But again, that does not. Yes, yeah, so if you watch the DVD, uh, the audio commentary explains a lot. Of what is it things. meant to be? An actual rectal an, um, operation? This is an act. Well, this this device is not a movie prop. The fact that it's got rear view mirrors on the side, uh, yeah. that's a movie edition. <laughs> but this device itself is an pr- actual um, medical yeah, yeah. thing that you get hung up if you can't sit down or get, get. so he's yeah he's had a had an operation in his anus and therefore must hang with the face down and he's got a russian comedian as his security advisor and he's got uh, this fantastic actor on the left to be his uh his and he's brain. awesome Dif- he's he's fantastic yeah. yeah he's great i'd read somewhere from somebody else who thought way too much about this movie like us um that um the uh, the the metaphor is that um, you'd got a broken spine, okay. and the president was spineless, was the metaphor. Yeah. Mm. But that metaphor or that pattern of the metaphor still works with the updated information. <laughs> it's just not that he's spineless; <laughs> it's just that he's, he's taking it in the ass. <laughs> he's been rugged. <laughs> Very good. All right, so so this this now, now, this. Now. This scene is when Buckaroo is making the video call yes, and informing yes. the president of all of the ins and outs of, of the, the danger, and then the president that the Russians might be attacking at the yeah. president should have his declaration, the short form of the declaration of war, ready. Now, just before we go, the um, the actor has been in some other movies. Does anybody know what other obvious the famous president. role the president has played? No. Can't, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just the eyes, fat yeah, I can't pick him as well. Has he been in a western? I'll, I'll start giving you some hints. Oh. Yeah, he was is he a, in a western. Uh, hey, is, yeah, was he in a western? No. Mm. Um, okay, I know it now because I am looking on IMDb. Ronald Lacey. All right, then who is it? Um, He's a Gestapo guy in uh, in uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Of course, he, he is. is the Gestapo guy that gets the uh, that gets the thing burnt onto his hand. Yes, which is another amazing coincidence because it's so similar to the ink going on the forehead, on the forehead. of Doctor Hakita. Yep, the pattern repeats. Which one came first? Raiders, nineteen eighty-one. Oh yeah, yep. Well, there you go. Wow. I actually thought that was meant to represent a mouse wheel. That, you know, he's going nowhere, he's trapped. Oh, yeah. yeah. He also plays a German soldier in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Absolutely. I, I remember he was a, a brother, Russian. Probably. <laughs> like, he played a Russian in Firefox. Another theme that they have yeah. in common. <laughs> I remember him from Firefox as well. He was a, he was a Russian. So it was like your on screen Nazi. <clears throat> Nazi yeah. for all occasions. Mm. All right, so. Um, meanwhile, back at Yo-Yo Dine, the bad guy, the good guys, are slowly fighting their way down, down, down into the um, the bottom of the base. Yep. And down there, they find out that John Big Boote. The base is filled with aliens who hang around lounging chairs. Yeah. They eat chips. They watch television. They're, they're generally, nesting. They nest, but they, yeah. you know, they're not. Th- Right, really. They're just sitting there. Even even when Lord Wolfen is doing his Mussolini impersonation, <laughs> they, the, could, the they thing, couldn't care. They just sit there and look. Oh. <laughs> yeah. and, and and in comes the Banzai gang with shotguns and starts shooting everybody. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Now that's a very astute observation. It is, it is a wonderful cinema moment. The uh, the rousing um, rally to the troops. Um, or the call to the troops to rally that he gives. It's a great performance. And if yeah. you think about yeah, it's it, fantastic. those guys, they're just trying to escape. But the other guys that are kind of the yeah. Jesus good guys are actually going to nuke ones. Russia yeah, yeah. to yeah. start a nuclear war. Yeah. If yeah. that's what it takes. If that's what it takes. That's right. All right. Got to so, stop those red ones. Yeah. Uh, there's some people who say this is the allegory on the communists. You know, the, the, oh, the okay. communists, the red, yeah. the red uh, electrons. Oh, mm. yeah. So obviously they have to all be killed. Yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. And maybe... Yeah, yeah, and the, the the black electroids is more um, suitable than just calling them white versus the red. And I did note that the film seems to be very anti-nuclear war. Mm. I mean, it was you know during the the Cold War, but they make mm. yeah rather than being gung ho about it, mm. which is what normally happens in canon films. Mm. Wasn't it? Was it? Was it this film that? Because oh, I watched another movie the other day. Was it this film where the, he's ready to sign it, and someone says, "Yeah." Sh- should we it's should we maybe think about of, it? Of defense, yeah. <laughs> the woman, the only that's, one in the room who has the balls right. to yes, that's right. stand up to it. Yes, yeah. right. 
and she was probably the, perhaps the most logical, rational, yeah. reasonable. Because the the, the military the- general who's sort of very decorated, he's just a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm packing fudge in my undies right now. <laughs> and he does the recap. The president does the recap. So let me get this straight. There's some guys from the dimension. There's aliens. There's da, da, da. And we got a nuke. Okay, no worries. And then she steps in. Maybe we should think about this <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. At least Twitter World wasn't around there. Yeah. All right. So they um they find that there's a machine down the bottom of Yo Yo Dine, which a machine. They're spaceship. They're spaceship. Spaceship. building a spaceship. Right. Yeah. right? Um, now, what happens next is the bad guys start piling into the spaceship. Now, this is my plot point that I want to bring up. We have the flux capacitor oscillation overthruster as the focus of this movie from day one, the very start. It started in the rocket car all the way back. And then it's been chased and it's been put into the handbag and it's on the base and they're trying to get it. But when it comes down to it, Dr. Uh, Lord Warfen just says, Ah, fuck it, I'll just use mine. Just mine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Bosh. Yeah. Um, As the other alien, the one that. Uh, big booty. Big booty says it's, it's a big not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. But why does Lord Warfen suddenly go, eh, it'll do Because it. I think that's the Lazar... What's the Legato? Lazardo. Lazardo. You're Legato. I'm Legato. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the impulsive nature. That, that impulsive nature. Uh, yeah, you might be right. Ah, uh, true. And he can't help himself. Yep. You might be right. Because he originally breaks out because now that he knows Buckaroo Banzai has figured it out, he yep. can finish that last 25% and escape. Yeah. But mm. then in the end, he's just... Fuck it, we'll just have a go. Yep. And as we see, rather than entering the the eighth dimension or whatever, it just goes through the brick wall. Yep. It's a big fail. Yeah. <laughs> in the those fantastic little harnesses that they yeah. hang in while they're the trying to be safe. Harnesses. <laughs> meat harnesses. Let's let's not let's not point out the glaring fact that they were put in the eighth dimension as a prison. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to that's return. The bit, that's the bit I'm wondering. Where <laughs> they're are trying they to return go? to the place that they were put in as a prison no, no, instead no. of to Planet Ten. But Planet Ten is who also knows where it is. It, oh, no, no, Planet Ten could be in a different galaxy. It's mm. very far mm. away. It's where and the you coral get there goes. via the eighth dimension because ah, no, time and space, uh, right? Okay. It's all okay. like it's, that's their wormhole essentially. That explains okay. that. Okay. Well, that'll do as but, an explanation. But the plot hole still, even though you know the impulsiveness, how come he's been in that mental asylum for? 50 years, yeah. according to um, our friends at Wikipedia. Yeah. How come that impulsiveness hasn't made him do that during yeah. that 50 years? Yeah. That's exactly right. Is it because he's just on the verge? He thinks, fuck it, I'll have a go? Or He didn't think it was ready. And then he saw on television that the drugs? somebody has one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it does yeah, make yeah, sense why he suddenly thinks his, his thing is going to do. When previously for 50 years he thought it didn't, yeah. And it's a weird um, uh, abandonment of a very useful, practical trope. And that is, you see it in like Star Trek movie. What was that last Star Trek movie? The Star Trek whatever it was that we, you know, Beyond, Beyond. where they're surfing on the bees. Yes, right. Yeah. What's the story there? It's like there happens to be an ancient weapon, as there always is, Mm -hmm. right? And the bad guys are trying to get it. Yeah. But in that story, the bad guys actually get it. Yep. And they switch it on, yeah. and then the heroes save the day. Yeah, and that's how it should go. So really, you know, in this story, they have to get, they should get the the thing that they've been chasing. He for. shouldn't have had his own. Yes, he shouldn't have had his own. Then they should switch it on. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Buckaroo then saves the day anyway. Yeah, that's right. Well, his impulsiveness could still work you <clears throat> because know, he, he gets. He, 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 he wasn't ready. How does know? he save him? He just blasts him out of the sky. He could have blasted him out of the sky with the oscillation of a thruster on board seconds before making his interdimensional jump. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a bit of a wasted thing. Yeah. And so, you can't help but think that there was a parallel story here and where, you know, they, they, they literally went in a slightly different, you know, direction where the real plot is still out there in the ether somewhere. I'm sure half of the things yeah. that they were swirling through their heads are out in the ether somewhere. Cool. All right, so the spaceship takes off and it doesn't go to the fourth dimension and then the what happens is... Buckaroo somehow is stows away on a spaceship. He stows like, away on the mothership, but miraculously lands in this little, little captain's yacht or whatever that is. Thing, yeah, you know, with the space conch, the flying conch. Yeah. Yeah. flying conch, yep. Spaceship. All right, so he ends up with his own spaceship, and he shoots some laser beams. At, Which has uh, a powerful cannon on the top well, there. Yes, of course. Um, and how do we conclude? 
What happens at the very end? Because I can't think of it. At well, the that's moment. it. They, that's it. They, they, they kill the aliens yeah. and then that's smoochy it. smoochy. Yeah, yeah, they blow it up. They blow up the alien. He abandons ship. How does he end up in the parachute? Oh, parachute. Yeah, he jumps out with a parachute. Because, and because, because, because John the script Parker, had a parachute in it. The script. It's the alien spaceship. John Parker takes us back to the mothership. He flies back and they don't bother to land yeah, that's right. him yeah. and let him get out. He's yeah. just, There's a parachute. Oh, we take that. Yeah. Save the save the trouble. Because like, aliens have parachutes. Yeah. But that's the <laughs> ultimate tuck and roll. Like, I'm not going to stop. Tuck and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> out, out you go. Yeah. But we have one last loose end to tie up. And that's when he gets back home. Yeah. It turns out, very sadly, that Penny is dead. Which also wasn't really shown in the film because she was still alive when he left her, right? They yeah. saved her from the slug and mm. in uh, Jeff Goldblum and Perfect Tommy are there to look after her. So and why does she die? She's dead. Why, why does, does she, she die? Why because, does she die? Because, why? Why? Because Jeff Goldblum, Dr. Onion... He's a bad doctor. Because the other guy died. <laughs> That's the reason. <laughs> People are dying everywhere. And he couldn't do his job in the first place because exactly. Buckaroo had to go and do it. He's a fucking exactly. fraud, this guy. He's a <laughs> Dr. A cowboy. Of, of he's a legitimate cowboy. The, the, the true name. He's Hanoi Shan in disguise. <laughs> yeah, that's Good the... Yeah. So, bet. yeah, they have this really weird thing where one of the heroes cops the blame for killing Penny. Right? Does he? Well, he, he fails to save her life. It's his fault. That's right. Why the writers didn't say, and let's imagine a different, let's imagine the ninth dimension yeah. where there's another version of the story and she's got the spider on her leg and she's got the snail slug thing in it coming into her face and Dr. Uh, uh, Lord Warfen says, Ah, let's just the fucking kill her. And they do. And they throttle her and she... Eh, and mm. she dies yep. and she's dead and it's their fault mm. and then when he gets back she's under the blanket and then you know then we can have the next next bit and we don't have to lay, lay the blame on poor yep. old yep. New Jersey New Jersey so how does she get brought back again because wow. of his uh, because he's been oh that's right he, the he zap kiss kisses her. the kiss of life they give him that, that, that as, a, as a farewell present that's the, right the aliens that's yeah. right brings her back so he does the Prince Charming yeah. trick. Prince, the Disney Princess awakening moment. Yeah. In his special room on the bus. Was it on the bus? Yeah, no, it was on the bus. No, it might have been back at the Institute. I'm not sure. And she's back alive again. And there's the, there's the thing that was missing in the Battle Beyond the Stars, where kill the bad guy, then show the results. Yeah, that's right. Right? Don't just roll the credits at that point. We need mm. to see, did people live happily ever after or they didn't just went on their own direction, whatever. Mm. Um, so we saw the result. We saw that there was a happy ever after sort of moment there. Even though, even though it was fairly truncated, we didn't, get to, short. No, we didn't get to wrap up with the president yeah. saying, congratulations, yeah. buckaroo, yeah. that was awesome, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. But we did get to see them walking around the... Uh, the storm drains of LA looking yes. for the, the including, drag race including in, the in Greece. People. That's what I imagine. <laughs> See, that's they were looking for the drag race in Greece <laughs> and they just couldn't find it. They had the wrong they had storm rocket, drain. Yeah, <laughs> they, had a, they had a rocket car. They would have won the drag race. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. The um, the budget is unknown. I haven't been able to find it. Have you been able to find the budget? I can tell you what it grossed domestically. Um, $6,200,000. Um, if we were to convert that, I guess, to 2017 actuals, uh, it'd be 16 million. That's not much. It's just not much. But I can guarantee, with Canon Media Group footing the bills, um, it probably cost less than two million to make. It was a big flop at the time, so yeah. it presumably didn't make much money back. I yeah. had a feeling the guys who wrote it were trying to create a transmedia IP. Mm. They're a bit ahead of their time. Mm. I think they wanted this thing to catch on yeah. and spawn mm. comics yeah. and action yeah. figures. Se and sequels, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And <laughs> that, that and it kind of did. As I said at the start of the show, they did that. They, they had a comic. Mm. They had yeah. a, um, a fan club with you know, newsletters and more lore. Yeah. Hang on, before the movie came out the cinemas or when no, no, after, after it came out? After and, it came and, out. And, yeah, but even when they made the film, that last sentence, Buckaroo Banzai will be back fighting the mm. World Crime mm -hmm. League. That was, you know, serious. They yeah. they had hoped that there would be a second mm. film. Yeah, mm. and they sort of signed on with the right guys to make a second film because Canon never met a sequel it didn't like. <laughs> yeah. They just put numbers after everything, and it's a pity that they didn't. 
kick it again. Mm. I got a feeling it's syndication and it's circulation through VHS and DVD and whatever. They're probably cleaned up because we don't see that at box office mojo numbers. You know, that's mm. all straight box office. Um, if it made six million in box office, it could have made it could have made forty, fifty million over the years, over the past twenty, thirty years, through VHS because of its cult status. Mm. Yeah, it made it to Blu-ray. That's a statement. You know, not, that, not everything does. <clears throat> yeah. As I say, it wasn't marketed very well. Mm. It's a nine dollar Blu ray though. But that's um, okay. I was reading that it, it had um, some amazing f- Can you films get to, the to yes. compete against. What was it competing against? Uh, I think uh, Ghostbusters was oh, one and uh, there was a few others. There was some eighty four. There were some pretty big um, films I saw that it had to compete against, so it just got swamped. Um, we're just trying to find the poster Mind here. You, it is in a niche of its own. There's a better way to do that. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to have a look at the poster because um, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. What do you think of the poster? And I'll give you a hint. I think this is the worst poster in the world. It could be. It could be. It's very unexciting. Out of it the whole film, something crashing through some bricks is yeah, all a, they had as a God rays with a center point. There's an explosion. There's dynamics there. A couple of planets up here. So it's yeah. off-worldly. I'm not sure about these little zigzaggy framey things. They're the eighth dimension. Okay. But our hero... Maybe z- electricity? Is exactly. waiting for a bus board hmm. with a briefcase... With a briefcase? ...shoved what? up his armpit. What's on his badge? Oh, it's, I don't know. Buckaroo Banzo or something? That's the worst pose. That's not a hero. That's a guy waiting for a bus. Yeah, it's, it is Buckaroo Banzo. If you go and see some or of the team, fan art... Team Banzo. The fan art's much better. And, and these odd portraits? Yeah. What? What? the fuck is this yeah and the writing and it's even got buckaroo again and the writing and this logo down here what's that a picture of yeah that's the rocket car speeding off into the distance the no because you know what the movie is you yeah. know that's what that yeah, is yeah, right yeah. if you didn't know what the movie was yeah that what the hell is that and the use of the word across not from the f- eighth dimension, not to the eighth dimension, not in the eighth dimension, but it's across the <laughs> yeah, eighth. Yeah, it's dimension. like next to the eighth dimension. Yeah, yeah. No, couldn't we call it invades the fucking eighth <laughs> dimension? <laughs> the director wanted to, the original name of the t- movie was supposed to be just Bakaru Banzai. Yeah, yeah. And then the producer said, "Now nah, that's too weird. People, there's nothing there to hold on to. There's nothing that that's tells us cool. anything. It's just yeah. so weird." And they had to make up that other the bracketing around it to even. Get it released. Um, the f- the films it had to compete against were the um, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, mm. and Ghostbusters. So it was up against some. Yeah. So in that same year, some famous movies. In that same year, Christopher Lloyd was playing the best Klingon character in Star Trek history, <laughs> um, in The Search mm. for Spock, and Big Booty. Yeah. <laughs> Big Booty. <laughs> Two aliens. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, the big question. Do we buy, rent, or incinerate this film? Well, talking from experience, buy. Because that's <laughs> what I did. <laughs> from unfortunate <laughs> experience. Did no, I didn't read. I uh, didn't, no. didn't, didn't. didn't uh, I, I watched it yesterday, just in preparation. Uh, watched it again yesterday. Mm. For, so I watched it the second time, and I thought, oh, I'll watch it with the director's commentary. Mm-hmm. So I watched it with the director's commentary, and then when that was over, I had some time on my hands. I thought, oh, I'll watch it again. Mm-hmm. So I watched it again without the director's commentary. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, I, I don't regret. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite to to Rick here. I, I love that film. Oh, interesting. I, uh, I really like it. So you, you were buy and keep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Rather than buy and, and watch again. Buy an eBay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, my okay. My um, opinion is. Um, I read I read a whole bunch of people's reviews of it as well, and uh, there's a, there's that inf- interesting phenomena again, where somebody says um, the story doesn't make any sense, the plot was horrible, crappy movie, love two it. two no no two stars, okay. never watch. Yeah. Then you get the next person in the list. He says, I couldn't understand the story. It was bloody amazing. Yeah, I yeah. had to watch it four times in a row. <laughs> Loved it. Nine, nine out of ten stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. For the same reasons. <laughs> yeah, the same reason. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And isn't that the true of most cult things? Like, mm. you, you can't put your finger on it. Mm. And it's the weirdness and quirkiness and the fact that you don't understand absolutely everything about it that sort of 
sits in the uh, in the in that cult space. So for me, I want to um, use a line from Buckaroo Banzai to summarise the movie. In the in the the famous line when he's in the band, you know, he's saying, you know, no matter where you go, there you are. Yeah, yeah. I saw that in the trailer, or I saw it somewhere. Um, it could have been a little piece that was on YouTube that I watched, and. It tried to be as profound as it could, this film, in some places. Yeah. Or he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so my sort of uh, summary of the movie is, no matter what movie you make, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, is it a rent? It's a bludge. Okay. It's a borrow slash rent. Uh, so don't ever want to own it. <laughs> but I do like the story of the movie. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, and that's also important for cult, mm. cult, uh, cult property. Um, I'd incinerate it along <laughs> with any shop trying to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that f- a film we watched about the mutant crabs and the guy with the dodgy accents yeah. and the, the female making professor the making yeah. sandwiches, that is, you know, that is gold yeah. compared to this. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely understand where you're coming from because it sounds to me like there is a, it's a deep-seated, pers- a visceral attack on you um, uh, and your senses, and you wanted names. He wanted to kick ass. I want names, and I want to kick those asses that belong. Yeah, to I wanted names. to know who was responsible yeah, yeah. for the idea of us watching this. Yeah. And I couldn't tell him. I didn't have the well. I don't know whether it was fifty percent. I didn't have the heart to tell him, and I couldn't quite remember whether it was your idea or his idea. Um, I think it was your idea. And and I hadn't known the film until recently, so um, I'd known about it, but I hadn't seen it. But Dan I, had been talking about having seen it. It came, came up I'm at some I'm glad I watched it because yeah. now I know what it's all about. You know, right, for so years your, and years and years, I didn't know what so it was all about. So what's your opinion then? Um, I wouldn't buy it, but I'd definitely rent it. Um, I, would, I would pay some money to see it, mm-hmm. but it would be a small amount. Mm-hmm. It would be in single-figure dollars. <laughs> yeah, okay. Would you go to a fan convention and dress up as somebody? No? Um, maybe Big Booty. Big Definitely hair. not uh, Perfect Tommy. That hair dye that he put into his hair to make it all white, after, at the end of the shooting, um, the actor's hair was started falling out. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. He's probably straight he's, bleached. He's, he's black-haired, but there were so many dark-haired men already on the f- on in that group that he, s- he put his hand up to say, oh, somebody suggested to him, would you mind would you mind colouring it white? And he goes, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I'll do that. It's, it's rich. Because he's perfect, you're perfect, right? You it's rich with trivia, this film, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's... Yeah. Um, um, what I do recommend to anybody, if you haven't seen the film, um, do yourself a favour and actually see the half an hour. Well, now it's spoiled. If you got this far <laughs> through the entire show and you, you haven't seen the see film it. yet, you don't need you to don't see need it anymore. This is the best way to actually see this film. Um, <laughs> this took longer. Yeah. This took this is almost two hours, so, yeah, yeah. so it took it longer, longer than watching the film. The film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but don't use this as a commentary because you might find it might not match what you're looking at. There is a half an hour documentary, goes for 40 minutes, half an hour on YouTube that you can see uh, called inside the making of or something like that or mm. in the making of and it's hosted by the director mm. and you'd need to see that probably almost more than you need to see the film first i yeah. saw that before i saw the film and i still didn't know what the film was about yeah because they don't really tell you mm. it actually makes it more interesting to see the film afterwards yeah, yeah that's what i found as well all right gentlemen thank you for uh, joining us this evening our first four-man panel which we're going to do a lot more of mm-hmm. um and uh, we're also going to probably focus a little bit more on this style of looking at uh, films, sometimes games mm. as well. Mm. Uh, but also, but basically, just coming together. Let's call it our, our round table review, mm. um, uh, albeit wrong shaped table, but definitely the right vibe uh, to share our thoughts and um, impressions of something um, in a, a sort of a linear breakdown of what that thing is. I think we we enjoy it. Whether anyone enjoys looking at it. Um, we don't really care. <laughs> uh, but as always, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Tom, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Rick, Dan, as always. Um, uh, parting words, gentlemen, before we leave. Keep your planet tidy, monkey boys. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Someone has to pay. Yeah, nice. And Dan, yours was? Uh, yes, whatever you know, podcast you make, there it is. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, Dan's put together a little um, a little ext- uh, electronica sampled uh, piece that befits the property from Buckaroo Banzai, including some samples. And well, while like that. I'll, I'll take us out while you set that up, right? Go for it. 
possibly one of the best things. One of the best things about going out to a restaurant and having meal is at the end you have dessert and the dessert is freaking wonderful and you walk out of the, the place and you're thinking, oh, ice cream, that was strawberry ice cream, that was just magic, I love that mm. place, that was great. Similarly, one of the best things, undoubtedly, about the movie is, is, the, is the end credits. The Absolutely, end credits. <laughs> and which are so simple. It's just a bunch of people walking in a happy footstep, listening to what are they, uh, Uptown Girl. No, no, they, they, well, it's a special thing, right? The, the special thing. theme wasn't written at the time, so oh, they right, had okay. up Billy Joel oh, blaring right, okay, off, okay. off a truck, and okay. they were all step stepping and step to <laughs> Uptown Girl, which has the exact okay. same beat, yep. and they're all just happy walking and dancing, and it's just a lovely mm. way to do the end credits. And you, and we mentioned earlier, you can watch a half an hour version of it, and you can keep watching it. <laughs> you can and set that half hour to loop. In a lot of ways, that symboli symbolically kind of expresses the team and their vibe and yeah. their i think it tells a lot about the actual crew striding through life yeah 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 i think it's a good summary of some of the things that we're trying to achieve awesome see you next time cheers bye